Suddenly Chilawa waved his hand, his face was ugly, he pouted and said loudly, just a small baron, what good things could he have? Even if Chilawa sacrificed himself tomorrow, he would sacrifice himself outside, he would not eat a single bite of their food. The next afternoon, at Lu Feng's party on the ship, a sumptuous and delicious meal was laid out before him, the fragrant aromas wafting throughout the room, full of delicacies. There was beer-steamed crab, ground pork leg, steamed octopus with lemongrass, double clams, double beef hamburger, steamed sea bream, crispy fried shrimp, and much more. Chilawa couldn't help but feel emotional when she saw the banquet table in front of her. Her eyes were wide open and shining, drooling non-stop. Can someone bring a bowl to catch the food for me? Chilawa couldn't believe her eyes. What is this? It looked like every dish was delicious. Princess Elsa was overwhelmed by the sumptuous dinner table and wondered, how much did such a lavish banquet cost? Chilawa was still in shock, it smelled so good. Lu Feng generously said, Leader, I've told the kitchen to prepare a lot of dishes. Don't be polite, just come in enthusiastically. Princess Elsa replied shyly, I've troubled the city lord, she thought to herself, even during the most prosperous period of the Beast Empire, they wouldn't treat guests so lavishly. In the end, who is the royal family, me or him? Elsa shook her head thoughtfully, no, she couldn't be infatuated with the past. What the beastmen needed now was not to remember the past, but to develop from scratch, to regain the glory of the kingdom of the past. Elsa continued speaking, City Lord Lu Feng, can we discuss the business you mentioned last time? Lu Feng replied, then I'll get straight to the point. Xiang City needs a lot of sheep and wool. Princess Elsa asked, sheep, how many? Lu Feng replied, 300 a day, 9,000 a month. Speaking of this, Princess Elsa and Shilawa's faces were filled with panic, their eyes wide open, their mouths agape, and they stammered, 9,000? Lu Feng calmly continued, in addition, I also need 1,000 pack horses and 500 war horses, and we will increase the number in the future based on the situation. The purchase price will not be lower than the market price. If you agree, we can use materials to exchange such as cloth, wheat, pottery, and even salt. Princess Elsa's eyes were still filled with shock. Lu Feng continued, if I guess correctly, salt in the tribe is very rare. I can assure you, our Xiang city has enough salt. Chilawa turned to Princess Elsa and said, Chief, sheep and wool are no problem, but war horses, Elsa thought, the tribe's war horses totaled no more than 2,000, if a quarter were sold, the tribe's fighting strength would drop sharply, in case they were attacked by other tribes as soon as spring came. The princess replied, Chilawa, you sit down first, Chilawa said, but... Before he could finish his sentence, Elsa said again, sit down first. Chilawa sat down on the chair with grievance. Princess Elsa continued, City Lord Lu Feng, I can agree to this exchange. But, if I find out that you are just talking nonsense, then be prepared to pay the corresponding price. Elsa said with cold eyes, please know that the thing we beastmen hate the most is human deception. Dees and Mina were tense, sweating profusely. Lu Feng shook his wine glass to reassure everyone, don't worry, I am the city lord and also a merchant. As a merchant, I respect my word very much. Elsa answered holding a glass of wine in her hand, that's good. We both clink glasses, to wish us a happy cooperation. Lu Feng said, if you have time, why don't you come to our Xiang city to have a look? If you need anything, you can also send a caravan to Xiang city to directly exchange, I will definitely personally welcome everyone. Now there are many beastmen living in Xiang city. Princess Elsa replied, I have also heard of the great name of Xiang city. When I have time, I will definitely go to Xiang city to visit the city Lord Lu Feng. After Lu Feng's banquet, Princess Elsa and her guards returned to the beast tribe's camp. Chilua asked Elsa, Your Highness, why did you agree to sell the warhorses to them? You know, we spent a lot of effort training the warhorses, so wouldn't it be better for others? Princess Elsa replied, The lord of Xiang city's assets were very powerful, and his tricks were not bad either. He exchanged so many essential supplies, so it was very likely that he had some kind of scheme. The most important thing was that he treated his subordinates, whether they were beastmen or humans, very well. Chilua continued, Then there was no need to sell them warhorses. Elsa explained gently, she didn't understand, a character like the Lord of the Western City, would most likely do great things in the future. If she made a good connection now, who knows, she might be able to use that opportunity to rebuild the glory of the Beast Empire in the future. So the previous investment was indispensable. Even if we sell 500 war horses, we are still the strongest tribe among the nearby tribes, it will be far from affecting us. By allying with Xiang City, we will not be fooled by cunning merchants in the future. This is also a matter of benefit and no harm. Chilua was puzzled, so the princess really wanted to visit Xiang City. Elsa replied, it seemed like she had to go now. At this time in Blackwater City. City Lord Binsai asked Huron, so you are not returning to West Ocean City anymore. Huron replied, yes, City Lord Lu Feng told me to stay here temporarily, in charge of transporting the sheep and cattle bought from the grasslands. 
Mr. Binsai sighed and said, What a pity, I still want you to stay by the city lord's side. Gradually develop feelings, and when you get married, this black water city can be safely handed over to Lu Feng. Huron thought to herself, Dad is doing it again. She picked up the knife and continued, but this was just the superficial reason. In fact, the city lord had an important plan that he wanted her to help complete. Lord Binsai clasped his hands together and asked, What important plan? Huron quickly opened the lid of the box, Mr. Binsai stood up and looked. Mr. Binsai looked surprised and hesitantly asked. Hmm, is Lord Lu Feng really going to do that? Huron nodded and smiled mysteriously. At the secret residence in the royal capital of the Second Prince, the night was dark and thunder was everywhere. Second Prince Green slammed his hand on the table, his face full of murderous intent. He said, damn it, this Arnie, he's just a marquee, yet he dares to refuse me, he really doesn't know what's good for him. Suddenly a noise rang out, the Second Prince Green said in panic, huh, who is it? A mysterious person slowly walked in, below him was a person lying face down on the floor, blood flowing all over, it turned out to be an assassin. He was taken down by Red Deacon of the Black Iris Gang. Red Deacon walked in proudly and said, don't worry, it's me, this guy is an assassin, I discovered him. Your bodyguard doesn't matter, if it weren't for me, you would be in danger. Second Prince Green broke out in a cold sweat, he hesitated and said, oh, before he could finish his sentence, the soldiers outside ran in with urgent news, your highness, this place is surrounded by the first prince. The second prince was shocked, what? He regained his composure and raised his voice to scold, is this how you guys do your duty? That first prince has already come all the way here, and you are still here and not doing anything. Red Deacon replied, calm down, we are only in a cooperative relationship, not a subordinate relationship with you. Besides, if it weren't for us, Black Iris, Lucia's assassin would have taken your life. Second Prince Green continued, this assassin is also Lucia's man, how did he know I was here? Red Deacon crossed his arms in front of his chest and replied, he didn't know you were here, it's just that his strength could cover the entire royal capital, as long as it's where you are, he can take it. The second prince's face turned purple, sweat pouring down his face. He said, how could this be? How could he have so many soldiers? The second prince put his hands on the table and bowed his head, looking helpless. Red Deacon reassured him, but don't worry, we, Black Iris, are here. Your life is not worth worrying about. The second prince, still not relieved, continued to ask, Hoof. So my great partner, what should we do now? Red Deacon replied, abandon the capital. That sentence was like a thunderbolt, Green suddenly turned her head and said loudly, what did she say? The Red Deacon continued, the Grand Prince has already built up the capital's business very firmly. Even Duke Kylak has been successfully enticed by him, and even planned to marry Catherine to him. The royal camp is also controlled by the Crown Prince. It has been half a month since the king summoned anyone for a meeting. I'm afraid the king has fallen into the hands of the Crown Prince. Green said, if Lucia has control over the king, then what do we have to fight him with? Red Deacon shook his head and said, rest assured, this step, he went the wrong way. The Crown Prince surrounded your mansion, proving that he was in a hurry to eliminate you. When people are in a hurry, it is easy to do stupid things, and I am afraid that the next step will be a mistake. If that is really the case, there will definitely be people in the royal capital who will rebel. We might as well leave the royal capital first, go to another territory to develop our strength, and then contact those forces that are dissatisfied with the Crown Prince. Let's plot slowly. The second prince stroked his beard as if he was plotting something. He thought back to what Red Deacon had just said and replied, that made sense. Lucia's hypocrisy would eventually be discovered, and then I could take this opportunity to rise up again. Suddenly he slammed his hands on the table, shouted loudly, and gave orders to the soldiers outside, ordering all the knights to immediately clean up properly, attack with me to break the siege, and we will depart for the Northern Territory. Green smiled wickedly and said smugly, my good brother, let me show you off for a few days, I will come back. On this side, the first Prince Lucia heard the news that the plan to kill the second prince failed. He asked his subordinate why he wasn't dead yet. The subordinate knelt down, bowed low, and replied with a fearful expression, Your Highness, the other party has a very formidable guard. In addition, it seems that the second prince has already detected us. Before he could finish speaking, a blinding light moved towards the subordinate's neck. He froze for five seconds, then a sound rang out. He fell to the ground, he died under the sword of the crown prince Lucia. What a murderer, he killed to silence him. He considered human life as worthless, he even dared to kill his own younger brother, let alone this small subordinate. After finishing, he said to himself as if to comfort himself, mobilize all the knights but can't kill a single person who deserves to die, what do I need you for? Then he used a towel to wipe the bloodstained sword. Suddenly, a voice echoed from outside the door. Green had recently begun transferring the family property to his territory. If it weren't for that, we wouldn't have been so hasty in attacking him. 
Now that he's run away, I'm afraid he'll summon the knights to rebel. The Grand Prince Lucia replied with a cold gaze, he was not that smart. There must be someone, planning to help him. So he was a member of the Inglu Kingdom's religious sect. He continued, that's right, according to intelligence, the second prince had the support of Black Iris. So, killing the second prince wasn't that simple. The great prince wiped his face and said, they are not as good as you, but you still let him run away. The name and the religion replied, but we helped you get the royal capital, didn't we? Just leave Black Iris to us, with us here, even if the second prince comes to the territory, he won't be able to do anything. His eyes were cold as he continued, I just hope that after we're done, your highness won't forget our promise to let our main religion become the state religion of the Inglu kingdom. Crown Prince Lucia replied, Humph, the king of a country, of course he wouldn't go back on his word. The quiet moonlit night illuminated the entire kingdom, the sky was filled with stars, the scenery was poetic, contrasting with the deathly atmosphere in this kingdom. The sound echoed, it was the footsteps of the Crown Prince Lucia. Where could he be going this late at night? Suddenly he opened the door of his father's room. The king of Englu kingdom was lying on the bed, unable to sleep, occasionally coughing a few times. The crown prince walked into the room, he closed the door with his hand, the door made a rattling sound. He approached the bed, smiled, bowed his head and respectfully asked, Father, are you feeling better? The king coughed speechlessly, as if he had realized the prince's hypocrisy. He said, Humph, hypocrisy. The eldest prince continued with a deceitful look in his eyes, Father, the Inglu kingdom cannot go a day without a king, please give the order, let me rule the country on his behalf. What a cunning person, he wanted to kill the second prince green but failed. According to the admin's speculation, in order to seize the throne, will he also execute his father? The king sat up, coughing and saying, where is green? Tell green to come see me. The crown prince replied, green has run away. The king tried to continue, ha ha ha, cough cough. In the end, you still made a move, how pitiful. I should have sent you all away at the beginning. The crown prince asked urgently, so you intend to hand over the throne to Lucy? He continued, unfortunately, he no longer had the chance. After saying that, he picked up the pillow and pressed it against the king's face and continued, Father, don't blame me. Just obediently give me the throne, King Inglu struggled, his hands and feet were in disarray, and he only had time to catch his last breaths. The crown prince's eyes were bloodshot, and he smiled excitedly, just like the murderer who killed his father. He said, the throne is mine now, ha huh? The king's hand fell down, he died in the arms of the son he raised for so many years. The next morning in Taeduong city, the sun had already risen to the top of the mountain, the wind blew, causing the curtains to sway slightly. The sunlight shone through the curtains onto the couple's bed. Lu Feng caressed Mina's pair, his face filled with satisfaction. Speaking, the bed in the castle is indeed more comfortable than the one on the ship, right? Mina seemed to still be lingering over last night's passionate night. She lay snugly in Lu Feng's arms, her cheeks pressed against his chest, blushing, stammering, um, ah. Uh. But, she jumped up and continued, but the young master is not planning to get up yet, there are still many things to handle. Lu Feng pressed his face close to Mina and replied, now the western city has many people, enough money, there is nothing to deal with right away. Mina slightly raised her face, her eyes wide open looking at Lu Feng passionately, perhaps she was expecting something. Lu Feng moved closer and continued, what needs to be done now is. Hearing this, Mina closed her eyes, her cheeks flushed, her mouth slightly open, her lips plump, her breathing rapid. That's right, the two of them were about to give each other a passionate kiss. Just then, someone's voice suddenly echoed from outside the door, this is bad, young master. The door opened and broke the romantic atmosphere that enveloped the room, saying in a panic, young master, news has arrived from the royal capital. Oh my god, Ellie, oh Ellie, the couple was making love, no matter how urgent it was, they should have knocked on the door first. The room suddenly became quiet, the three people looked at each other speechless, Ellie froze for five seconds, unable to continue speaking. Lu Feng scratched his head, scratched his ears, not understanding what was going on, while Mina was embarrassed, her ears red, and she pressed her face into Lu Feng's chest. After straightening their clothes, the three of them went to the living room to talk. Lu Feng read the secret letter while listening to Ellie. The night squad that brought Princess Lucy back to the capital last time had established an intelligence base there. This was the news related to the capital that they reported back. Lu Feng finished reading the letter and said, Well, the situation in the royal capital is very tense right now. After the second prince left, the first prince monopolized the entire royal capital. Ellie said, It would take at least a few days for the carrier pigeon to return from the royal capital, I'm afraid the crown prince has already monopolized the royal capital for quite a few days. Lu Feng ordered, Ellie, follow my arrangement, recruit 1,000 more troops into the army and 500 into the navy. Start stockpiling strategic supplies, order the arsenal to prepare equipment number 2 and equipment for the entire army. Ellie obeyed, yes. 
Only then did Mina ask Lu Feng, young master, are they preparing for the next battle? Lu Feng replied, the fourth prince and the second prince left the royal capital to return to their respective territories, and next they would definitely want to fight for territory to deal with the first prince. Our western city is quite famous, those two princes will definitely target us. For the safety of all the people in the city, we must make good preparations. Ellie said, then we should call back Huron and the people who were sent to other cities. One more person means more strength. Lu Feng replied, no need, although the matter of the three princes fighting for the throne is a bit sudden, but there is no need to worry and make a fuss. Moreover, we do not need to care about the messengers of those three princes anymore. Ellie bowed her head, her eyes filled with deep sadness as she replied, okay, I wonder how Princess Lucy is doing. Lu Feng replied, huh, how did I not know that you and Princess Lucy have such a good relationship, Nina said with a smile, Ellie read Princess Lucy's novels before and is still very engrossed in them. Ellie blushed with embarrassment and rushed towards Mina, she shouted loudly, who told her to say it, scratch her to death. Mina laughed loudly, ha ha ha, sorry, sorry. Lu Feng continued, no, it's still unclear what the situation is in the royal capital, Princess Lucy will definitely be in danger, Ellie, you send someone to call Darlene here. Ellie opened her eyes wide and replied, yes, young master. Nicole entered Lu Feng's room and said, young master, Miss Darlene is here. Lu Feng replied, um, please come in. Darlene walked in brightly and said, Sir Lu Feng, you suddenly called me here. Is there some business you want to cooperate with me about? Tell me, we are already close business partners, but you should be a little more mature. Lu Feng replied, other than business, is there anything else that makes you so active? There is news coming from the royal capital, you should check it out first. Miss Darlene held the letter and read it. She continued, I never thought that the fake prince would dare. Lu Feng said, Darlene, I promised you before that I would save Catherine, I will definitely do it. I know Lucy is also your friend, so I will also think of a way to save Lucy. But now we are lacking a capable assistant, so I hope you can wait a little longer. Miss Darlene replied, what kind of person does your excellency Lu Feng need? The merchant association in the royal capital has attracted quite a few people to join in the past few years. Whatever kind of person your excellency Lu Feng wants, we can introduce them to you. Lu Feng replied, I've already set my sights on someone, and they should be here soon. At this moment, Mira and Leia, Flay's older sister, of the bird tribe, were flying straight towards the western ocean city. Leia asked, Mira, what do you mean? Mira hesitantly replied, huh? Big sister, tell me, what should we do if Flay won't come with us? Leia said, no way, Flay is my sister, there's no way she wouldn't follow me. Mira frowned, looking worried, thinking, Flay, don't blame me, I really can't stop big sister. Leia and Mira are walking into the Atlantic City. Leia asked Mira, why are there so many beastmen in this western city? Mira recounted, the first time here she was also very surprised, but the rule of Taeduong City is that humans and beastmen live together equally. Beastmen in Taeduong City live very happily. Leia thought for a moment but said nothing. Mira continued, Flay is probably in school right now, should we go directly to school to find him? Leia replied, if Flay is in school, then don't bother him. Mira said, we can also go directly to the city Lord Lu Feng, Flay is living with him now. Leia replied, well, then let's go find out about that city Lord Lu Feng first. But, you know a person's face but not his heart. Just by directly interacting with him, it's hard to know what kind of person he is. The city is like the city's ruler. Let's learn about this city first. Then the two bird people asked the passers-by about their city lord. The blue-haired girl asked back, city lord Lu Feng? Leia replied, yes, do you know what kind of person that lord is? The blue-haired girl smiled and replied, of course she knows. Her eyes lit up, showing great admiration as she continued, that is a very handsome city lord. I really doubt whether he is the prince of the royal capital or not. He is truly too charming. Leia and Mira looked at each other, let's go ask someone else. A tall, muscular, Tauran man replied. That is an extremely good city lord. He is my role model. All my life I have only wished to become a man like him. The two sisters continued to ask other people. This time it was an old man with a bald head and a cane. He replied, what? Oh, you mean Lord Lu Feng? This old servant has been through hundreds of cities. This is truly the first time I have met such a city lord. It can truly be called that day. Before the old man could finish his sentence, the two sisters bowed their heads and replied. Thank you, we have something to do and must go first. Leia was so angry that she punched the wall, leaving a dent. She frowned and said, what's going on? Is that Lu Feng guy so respected by everyone? The old man looked at the two sisters from afar, not understanding why they were angry. Mira asked Leia, big sister, are we still going to continue? Leia sighed, paused for a moment, then replied, of course we have to continue. 
She didn't believe there was such a perfect city lord in this world. Lu Feng was sitting when he suddenly felt like sneezing. Mina was pouring soup and saw that and asked, What's wrong, young master? Lu Feng replied, Um, it's fine he thought to himself, who was talking bad about me behind my back. Leia and Mira continued to ask the people here about the city lord Lu Feng. Leia said, Let's go somewhere else, I don't believe there really is such a perfect city lord in this world. Two people were walking down the street when suddenly a fragrant smell wafted out, not knowing where it came from. Leia took a breath, hmm. The two of them followed the scent and stopped at a snack shop. The aroma of food filled the air. The waitress held a plate of food in her hand and shouted loudly for everyone to hear, new products on sale, fresh from the oven. Leia curiously walked over and asked, what is this that smells so good? The waitress smiled and replied, oh, are you talking about pizza? This is the new flavor that our lord just made. I can tell you two have just arrived in Xi'an City, would you like to try some? Leia said, thanks, and picked up a piece of pizza to try. As soon as she took a bite, she opened her eyes wide in surprise. The delicious taste of the cake had awakened all her taste buds. Leia was stunned. Oh my god, why is it so delicious? She couldn't believe her eyes. Even the delicacies of the bird tribe couldn't compare. The waitress saw Leia's surprised and greedy expression and quickly continued, Do you want to come in and sit? There are many other types, we have many activities today. Leia said, Pizza, hurry up and pay. Then she hurriedly walked into the pizza shop, smiling and replying, Okay. She remembered the table of food that Lu Feng had laid out during their fight. She thought to herself, Why does this scene seem so familiar? These two sisters wouldn't be immersed in this place, right? What will happen to us bird people in the future? Leia ate and drank her fill, and when she left the restaurant, she told Mira, This western city, the food is cheap, and there are many delicious things, it's not bad. Mira was sweating profusely, frowned, picked up her purse and looked at it. Perhaps Leia had a different thought about Western City and the city Lord Lu Feng. Suddenly she turned her head to look at the restaurant, she saw people and animals here talking and laughing with each other. Leia thought to herself, moreover, the beastmen here are really happy, and also sincerely support the city lord here. However, she still needs to interact with them a bit. Then suddenly she called Myra's name. Mira turned around in surprise and looked at her sister and asked, What's wrong, big sister, do you want to eat something else? Leia replied, Is the lord of this place really treating Flay very well? Mira replied, Yes, yes, yes. Leia sat silently, her face dark, she was deep in thought. Mira continued hesitantly, Big sister, that matter, if. What if Flay really doesn't want to come back with us? Leia hesitated and said nothing, thinking for a moment then she said sadly, Don't be silly, only with us, will he be safe? Saying that, Leia turned around and walked forward, saying to Mira, Let's go, I have to take you to see Flay. Mira followed behind Leia's back and replied, Okay, okay. At this time, Flay had also finished school. She was saying goodbye to her friends at the school gate, bye bye. The cute brown bear girl turned around and replied, Let's go, see you tomorrow. While walking home, Flay suddenly heard someone calling him, Flay. She turned back and saw two people in cloaks slowly walking towards her from afar. Suddenly, she exclaimed, Ah, sister, she was very surprised when you came here. Leia knelt on one knee, spread her arms wide and said to Flay, Long time no see, you've grown so much. Come on, I'll come pick you up. Just as she was about to throw herself into her sister's arms, Flay paused, looking bewildered, then she turned and ran forward. Leia and Mira, not understanding what was happening, shouted, Flay, Flay. Sister Leia sat down on the ground, her face dark with sadness. She was very surprised and disappointed in the younger sister she had raised for so long. Mira turned to Leia and asked, Big sister. Sister, are you okay? Leia suppressed her grief and pulled herself together. Well done, Flay. It's been a while since we last met, your wings are getting stronger, right? At this time, in the city lord's capital, Ellie brought a stack of reports to Lu Feng. She said, Young master, the matter you assigned earlier has been completed. The navy has summoned 500 people, the army has also summoned 1,000 people. These city lords said that they will soon come to Xi'an city, you just need to arrange a specific time. Lu Feng replied, Okay, we will discuss this matter in detail later. Mina and Lelisa were sitting drinking tea and eating some snacks in Lu Feng's office. Lu Feng was engrossed in reading the report when suddenly the door opened. Flay didn't pay attention to anything around her. She ran straight to Lu Feng and threw herself into his arms, causing Ellie to stagger. Ouch, the pile of reports flew out of her hands. Lu Feng was startled and panicked, not understanding what was happening. He said, Flay, what's wrong? Flay, tears streaming down his face, stammered, Lord Lu Feng, I am. Before she could finish her sentence, somehow, Flay's sister Leia had already chased after her. She shouted loudly, where else do you want to run to? 
Leia kicked the wooden door, cracking it into many pieces, flying everywhere. She held her weapon and flew straight towards Lu Feng. Mina and Lalisa were worried and shouted, Young master, be careful. Lord Lu Feng, be careful. Lu Feng's aura is overwhelming, standing tall and fearless. Mina charged into battle with Leia. Lu Feng shouted, Stop. Flay screamed, Sister, don't. Sister. Only then did Leia and Mina stop. Night fell, everyone calmly sat down and talked to each other. Mira put her hand on her chest and bowed her head, saying sincerely. I'm sorry, Lord Lu Feng. Big sister didn't mean any harm. She just got angry when she saw Flay turn around and run away. She couldn't control herself a bit, Leia stood there with her arms crossed, watching. Lu Feng generously replied. It's okay, it's okay, if it's Flay's sister then it's a misunderstanding. Leia said angrily to Flay. Flay, you've played around enough, it's time to come back with me. This place is too dangerous, you must know that the only safe place for our bird tribe is the Stone Pillar Mountain. Flay stiffened, not moving. She stammered, Lord Lu Feng, it's possible. Leia asked again, what did you say? Flay yelled at her sister. Lord Lu Feng can also protect me. This girl is really amazing. Mira spoke up. Flay, how can you talk to big sister like that? Leia glared at Flay and said in a harsh voice, how did he protect me? Little Flay looked straight into her sister's eyes and said firmly, he helped me grow my wings back. Leia stood with her arms crossed and her wings spread out, stunned, not believing what her sister said. Seeing that her sister didn't seem to believe her, Flay spread out her tiny newly sprouted wings and said, I've grown wings again. If you don't believe me, touch them and see. Leia touched her sister's wings in surprise and said, they really grew back. How? Lu Feng said proudly, of course, eat well, sleep well. Leia was stunned, not believing it, so she asked again, is it that simple? Mira sighed and said, big sister, there are so many of us, we all don't have enough to eat. Lu Feng smiled and said, your name is Leia, right? I dare to ask, how many people are there in your bird tribe? Leia looked at Lu Feng with suspicion. She said, what are you saying this for? Lu Feng looked straight at Leia with his sparkling eyes and said, I want to make a deal with you. When the deal is successful, I will raise as many of your birdkin as there are. Despite receiving a very lucrative offer from Lu Feng, it seems that Leia still has many doubts. Unable to trust our male lead, Flay had no choice but to follow her sister back to her homeland. On the way to the Xiang City airbase, the two sisters sat in the carriage and talked to each other. Leia asked, Flay, why is your excellency Lu Feng willing to pay such a high price to feed our bird race? Flay replied, your excellency Lu Feng said, being able to fly in the sky is a treasure. Leia thought, she had her eyes on the flying ability of the starboard tribe. Flay continued, sister, Xiang City is really suitable for us. Lord Lu Feng will definitely treat every one of the bird tribe well. Leia crossed her arms and said hesitantly, then we'll have to see if he can transport food up to Stone Pillar Mountain. Flay replied, this was not a difficult matter for Lord Lu Feng. Flay had absolute confidence in Lu Feng's command and talent. The carriage stopped at the Xiang City Air Force Base, and there was something colorful and interesting on the ground. Leia asked, what is this? After a short while here, Flay replied simply, this is a hot air balloon invented by Lord Lu Feng, which can carry people or goods into the air. Mira happily said, big sister, with this hot air balloon, whether it's bringing food to Stone Pillar Mountain or picking up our people here, it's no problem. Flay replied sadly, the sky is no longer a place that belongs only to our bird race, sister. Suddenly Leia fell into deep thought, her eyes looking down. Then she sighed and said, but this hot air balloon flies very slowly, it can never be as fast as our bird race. Suddenly a familiar voice rang out, people of the bird tribe don't have the ability to stay in the air for too long like a hot air balloon, right? Flay turned his head and shouted, Lord Lu Feng. Leia turned around and replied, nothing in this world is free, tell me, what do you want from us in the end? Lu Feng said, I want all the bird people to grow wings and then help me work. Of course, I will pay everyone, and I can also give everyone a place to stay. Leia frowned, still looking doubtful, and replied, you want to hire us. Lu Feng smiled and replied, hiring, you could say that. This matter won't cause any harm to you girls, and I won't send you on a mission that could endanger your lives. Nyota interrupted Lu Feng and asked, young master, the goods are all loaded onto the hot air balloon, so it can fly at any time, Lu Feng replied, very good. This batch of goods includes food and salt. No matter what offer you make, we will give it to you. Hearing this, Mira and Flay's eyes lit up. They didn't expect city lord Lu Feng to be so generous. Leia frowned and gave a condition, okay? But just in case. I will only lead 100 people to the western city first. If it goes well, we can discuss the rest later. City lord Lu Feng smiled and replied, no problem, I respect your decision. 
Xiyang City will definitely not disappoint you. Flay then ran over and hugged the city lord, smiling and saying, that's great, Lu Feng smiled and patted this clever girl's head. Leia, Mira, and Flay board the airship to return home. The fire on the balloon burns, this fire will heat the air inside the balloon. The balloon will expand, pulling the basket and everyone inside up. Before leaving, Lu Feng said goodbye to the bird people. Miss Leia, I hope you can give me some training on how to coordinate with the hot air balloon on the way back. After I return, I have something very important to bother you and your people about. Leia replied loudly, okay. Ngu Dai ordered his soldiers to charge. One by one, each hot air balloon flew high into the sky, gradually becoming just a small dot of color. Lu Feng folded his arms and discussed with Ellie. Next, tell the intelligence department to keep a close eye on the royal capital. Furthermore, prepare to contact Lucy and Catherine regularly. I'm worried that something will happen over there. Ellie replied, I know. I'll have someone pay attention to the situation over there. At this moment, the situation in the royal capital was extremely chaotic. Lucy was sitting and chatting with Yuffie, a dwarf, at the blacksmith's house. Lucy clenched her fists and said with tears in her eyes. What exactly happened? Why was the royal palace sealed off? There were soldiers holding my portrait on the streets. Did something happen to father? Yuffie looked up at Lucy, her face filled with worry and pity for her friend. Lucy continued with tears in her eyes. After I left, what exactly happened? Yuffie placed her small hands on Lucy's as if to give her energy. Yuffie comforted. Your Highness Lucy. Don't be in such a hurry. Trust the young lady. She will bring news back soon. Lucy choked up and replied. Um, Yuffie, thank you for letting me hide. Yuffie said. What's this? Her Highness Lucy is my friend. It's only natural for friends to help each other. Lucy's tears continued to fall. She said sadly. But what exactly happened? Father. Yuffie couldn't help but feel moved to tears when she saw Lucy like this. Her Highness Lucy. Suddenly she thought of something. Eyes wide open. Arms up in cheers. Mouth smiling. She said. That's right. Lucy Sama. Let me show you this. Lucy asked in surprise. Ha? Huh? What is it? Yuffie pulled the cloth away with her hand. She said excitedly. Look. Oh my god, what is this? Admin thinks it is wings to fly high. Lucy asked Yuffie in surprise. What is this? Yuffie put her wings on her shoulders and replied. This is the flying three marks. I made it. It's the tool that lets us fly into the sky. Lucy clasped her hands together. Her eyes lit up. She looked very curious. She said. Fly into the sky. Really? Yuffie blushed. Scratched her head. Hurriedly replied. This. In theory, yes. But not yet. But. Lucy was sad again, she thought she had found a way out of this. Yuffie smiled and encouraged herself as well as reassured Lucy. One day I will create a tool that can fly me back to my Ali empire. Lucy replied. I trust you. Yuffie. Suddenly the door opened. It turned out to be Uncle E. Lee, a famous blacksmith. Anyone who met him for the first time would probably be a little scared. He had a muscular body, a long and bushy beard, thick eyebrows raised, and wore a satanic rosary. He brought water in. His face was solemn as he said. With your level of blacksmithing. I'm afraid that even after another hundred years, you still won't be able to create that tool. Yuffie frowned and objected. No way. I've improved a lot. This time I can definitely do it. Uncle E. Lee invited Lucy. Your Highness, please have some water. Lucy replied. Thank you, Uncle E. Lee. Uncle E. Lee sighed and replied to Yuffie. Okay, okay. But next time, don't jump down from the top floor. Last time, you scared Aunt Ruth's child to tears. Yuffie turned her head to reply. It won't be. Lucy watched the two of them talking to each other. Tears welled up in her eyes. She thought to herself. How nice. If only father could take Lord Lu Feng's medicine. If he could get better, that would be great. While she was thinking, she suddenly heard someone calling her name. Your Highness Lucy. Lucy turned her head to look. It was Jones. But why did Jones look so sad? Lucy looked at Jones with anticipation. Hastily asked. Jones. How is it, is there any news from father? Jones's face darkened. 
hesitantly said. Lucy's Highness. His Majesty. Was. Gone. Lucy froze. Numb. She collapsed in pain. No. How could that be? I, I don't believe it. Jones patted Lucy's shoulder to comfort her. Yuffie and Uncle E. Lee were also surprised. Heartbroken for the princess. Her Highness Lucy. Jones continued. It was the first prince who took action. The second prince failed in his attempt to seize power and fled the capital. The news of his majesty's death. I got it from a knight beside the first prince. The kingdom will announce his majesty's death in a few days. Lucy said with tears streaming down her face. Why? Is the throne that important? Even her biological father could be killed by her elder brother. Jones comforted Lucy. Lucy. Suppress your sadness. The most urgent thing now is to leave the royal capital. The crown prince's men are looking for you everywhere. Lucy regained her composure. She replied loudly. I know. Jones. Let's go to the Atlantic City. Jones asked again. The West Coast? Lucy replied. Yes. That's how it is. We can only trust His Excellency Lu Fong, whom Lelisa and Catherine both trust. Hopefully he can help us. Jones replied. Yes. Her Highness Lucy. Also, I heard news of Catherine on the street. Lucy asked Jones with a worried look. Catherine. How is she? Royal Capital Blacksmith. Blue Sky. The quiet space was suddenly broken by Princess Lucy's scream. What, Catherine has to marry that bastard? No, I have to think of a way to contact her. Princess Lucy was so worried that she wanted to run away. But Jones held out his hand to stop her. The Duke's mansion is heavily guarded now. I've tried. There's really no way to break in. Lucy's eyes suddenly flashed. She asked. That's right. Where are the people from Xiyang City? His Excellency Lu Feng has already said so. If there's anything, just look for them. Meanwhile in the royal capital of Duke Kailak. Mississippi please. Eat something. The maid brought a tray of food to the bed and begged. Catherine lay on the bed. Turning away from the maid, she replied, I don't want to eat. Take it away. But then the master will be angry again. The maid continued to persuade. But Catherine did not care. She decided to let it be. Be angry, but to him anyway. I was just a commodity. As long as it was not damaged, it was fine. The maid couldn't be persuaded and sighed quietly. All right. Miss. What a pity for the cuisine of this western city. Catherine suddenly opened her eyes when she heard that the food was from the western city. She sat up and asked again. What did she just say? Western city food. Yes. That's right. I heard the chef say it today. He studied cooking in the western city. I think the food he makes tastes no different from western city. The maid turned around and replied. Hearing that, Catherine's face turned a little red for some reason. She said shyly. Then put it down. If I'm in a good mood, I'll eat it later. Seeing that the young lady agreed to eat, the maid quickly and happily responded. Okay. Okay. The maid placed a tray of steaming food. Catherine pretended to be haughty. One eye closed. One eye open as if she didn't care. Just glanced over furtively. After the maid left the room, she happily got out of bed and went to the dining table. Suddenly Catherine remembered. Whom? That's not right. Lu Feng once said. The craftsmanship of the western city absolutely cannot be spread outside, could it be? Catherine used her fork to examine the food. Sure enough, deep under the food were two small pieces of brown paper. A Catherine immediately opened the two pieces of paper and read. The first one said, just wait for me. Lu Feng. This is the letter Lu Feng left behind. Catherine thought to herself. And there's Lucy. Let's see. Let the news get out in the food. His Excellency Lu Feng will arrange everything properly. Catherine raised her hand to her mouth and chuckled. Hmm. Looks like this is Lu Feng's way. That's right. In this world. Only he can think of this way. A gentle smile appeared on her face. Catherine happily jumped onto the bed. She continued to think. But what does Lu Feng mean? Is he coming to save me? Will he come in person? No, absolutely do not come in person. It's too dangerous. 
although she didn't want anything to happen to Lu Feng. But deep in her mind, another thought appeared and she blushed. But she really wanted to see him. A moment later, the maid came to Catherine's room again. Standing in front of the door, she asked, Miss, are you okay? Are you so happy just by seeing Western food? Catherine opened the door. Making a disgusted face, she handed the tray of food to the maid and ordered, Take these things out. I don't want to eat. The maid sighed. But miss, just now I... I have no appetite. Catherine interrupted. The maid couldn't speak and just beat helplessly. Okay. Okay. The maid brought the tray of food down to the kitchen. The chef looked at her and asked. What's wrong? Miss still doesn't want to eat. The maid replied. Yes. What should we do? Just follow the old rules and cancel them. Okay. The chef said. Then he handed the tray of food to another person and said, Hey, new kid. This is for you. The new servant quickly took the tray and replied, Okay. Okay. Looking at such delicious food, the young lady still doesn't eat. He said. It seems the young lady has no appetite again. The chef heard that and objected. Who said that wasn't true? Then he pointed to the bucket on the ground. That's right. That bucket of rice water. Take it and dump it. Go out through door number two. There's no one there. But still be careful. Don't touch other people and make them dirty. The blonde turned back to look and immediately followed. Okay. On a narrow street, the newcomer slowly carried the box when he came to a beggar sitting with a bowl. He quietly threw into it a small box in which probably contained Catherine's message. The old beggar saw the object was in the bowl. He leaned on his stick and slowly left. Back to the royal capital's forge. In the room, Princess Lucy was sitting reading a book. Joan stood behind the princess's chair with his arms crossed and eyes closed. Knock, knock. A light knock sounded on the glass window. Jones responded immediately. Who? A silhouette reflected in the window spoke. Two young ladies, this is news from Catherine. If you have any further news to convey, leave the letter under the number three tree in the Central Park tomorrow afternoon. The man finished speaking. He then placed Catherine's message by the door and left. Princess Lucy quickly opened the door. Picked up the object that had just been put down. She was actually able to contact Catherine. But, Princess Lucy couldn't help but wonder. How did His Excellency Lu Feng do it? His influence was clearly all in Xi'an City. In Somalia City, in front of the city gate, is the group of the fourth prince of the Inglu Kingdom, Ding Keda. Finally, they have reached the western region. Humph, Green, Lucia, you guys just wait. Wait for me to arrange this western region properly. That day, I will lead the army back to the royal capital. A group of people came before the fourth prince, raised their hands in front of their chests and respectfully greeted. Greetings, your highness. Among those who spoke was Count Pulley. He spoke on behalf of the others. Your Highness the Fourth Prince. You're finally here, we've been waiting for you for a long time. The Fourth Prince sighed in response. I have put so much into this western region. Of course I have to return. Count Pulley, gather my knights. You have worked hard. Count Pulley happily replied upon hearing the compliment. No trouble, no trouble. I am willing to dedicate the credit to Your Highness. Your Highness the Fourth Prince. The fourth prince and Count Pulley spurred their horses to look at the group of people in front. The Count couldn't help but sigh, not afraid to laugh. In my entire life, I have never seen so many knights gathered together. It looks so majestic. The fourth prince's face was cold but he still replied. Yes, majestic. However, after saying that, the prince's expression quickly changed. He frowned inwardly. Majestic, huh, what a bunch of bottomless pits. The fourth prince looked at the amount of food. He kept calculating in his head, food, salary, which one wasn't an astronomical number. If this continued, he might have to spend all the money he had earned over the years. He had to think of a way. But he couldn't let these nobles support themselves. Otherwise, they might rebel. But he couldn't let them not pay their salaries. Damn it. The more he thought about it, the more confused the prince became. Then he suddenly remembered. That's right, wasn't Xiang City also in the western region? Still in Somalia City. After thinking about the western city, the fourth prince pulled the horse's rein and prepared to advance. Let's go, enter the city. Count Pulley stood by and listened to the order while showing the way. Yes, your highness. Please come this way. 
After entering the city, the fourth prince's group was currently eating. At the table, the fourth prince sitting in the front seat asked. Where are Viscount Jesse and Viscount Cohen Jean now? Count Pulley quickly replied. Your Highness. It's been seven or eight days since there's been any news from Viscount Jesse and Viscount Cohen Jean. Your subordinate feels. That Xiang City Lord Lu Feng. He might have already made a move on those two Viscounts. What? The fourth prince frowned. Pulley explained. Your Highness. Lu Feng in the western region was not only not welcomed, but also spoke rudely many times. Furthermore, he also raised beastmen. I suspect he has other plans. It's just that it was winter. It was inconvenient for the army to move. So we still couldn't do anything to him. Now, winter is over. The army has gathered. I propose to attack and retake the western fortress. Then teach that brat a lesson. As soon as the Viscount finished speaking, someone raised his hand to show his agreement. I see. The others quickly agreed. That's right. I also heard that he has been inviting the neighboring city lords recently. I wonder what he's plotting. However, in addition to everyone's data, the fourth prince raised his hand to his chin and rubbed it for a while before saying, Count Pulley. Don't discuss it in front of me. Have someone call Lu Feng over here. I'll personally ask him clearly, isn't that enough? Furthermore, I heard rumors in the royal capital that this person is very talented. If it's really as rumored, then he can help me ascend the throne smoothly. The words of the prince made the Earl Pulley, whose face was about to turn serious, hastily add. Your Highness, that Lu Feng might not come. Viscount Jesse and Viscount Cohen Jean have been gone for so long. It is impossible to make him come up with the method of making perfume. The Count was extremely worried at this moment. Damn it, how could His Highness have such an intention? If he really came, wouldn't my sons have died in vain? The fourth prince still stuck to his original decision. No matter what Pulley said, he would not change his mind. He waved his hand and gave an implicit order. If he does not come, then tell him that I have 2,000 knights here, and can trample his western city at any time. But your highness, Count Pulley still tried to persuade him but was eventually interrupted by the fourth prince. All right, I have made up my mind. Where are you? Immediately call Lu Feng of Xiang City to come here and meet this prince. The rest of the people in the room could only follow the order and respond. Understood. On the Yu River, the water reflected the clear blue sky. On the huge boat, a curse rang out. Damn it, I am a Viscount. I have hundreds of knights under my command. And I have to personally invite a Baron. Am I not even as good as a Baron, damn it? What the hell is the fourth prince thinking? This was Viscount Lip's voice. He was sitting on a wooden chair angrily spouting a string of words. The servant beside him immediately spoke up to calm things down. Ha, huh, my lord, calm down. Suddenly a voice came from outside the cabin. My lord, we can see the port of Taeduong City now. Wow, so many boats. There are more boats than in the royal capital. Over there, over there. That boat is so big. It must be 50 meters long. How did they do that? Everyone on the Viscount's ship looked at the bustling scene of boats at the harbor and exclaimed in amazement. Even the blue-haired servant beside Viscount Lip had to admit. The port of the western city was just like in the legends. There were too many ships. Viscount Lip was still feeling resentful. He snorted coldly. So what if it was prosperous? It would soon belong to the fourth prince. Lip thought to himself. But those ships all seem to be merchant ships. Hmm, so many merchant ships. That Lu Feng must be making quite a bit of money in a day. Hmm, I have it. After thinking, he crossed his arms in front of his chest and said to the servant with a sly smile. Hey, when we meet Lu Feng later, we'll still follow the old rules. Give him some bitterness, understand? The servant was puzzled when he heard that. But, my lord, didn't the fourth prince order us to invite Lu Feng? Seeing the servant disobey, the viscount angrily turned his face black and glared. Humph. The servant saw that his master's expression was not good, so he did not reply and said more. He stammered in response. Yes, yes, my lord. Viscount Lip stood on the boat for a long time but still could not reach the shore. He asked impatiently. But why has it been more than half a day and they still have not reached the shore? What are you guys dawdling for? The servant quickly explained. My lord, you don't know. This port of the western city has to queue to enter the city. What? Line up? You're telling me, a Viscount, to line up with those commoners? Viscount Lip shouted, startling the birds in the sky. The servant continued to mumble. But my lord, there are no more seats. 
Viscount Lip looked at the long row of boats before him. Then point in one direction. Viscount, damn it. Isn't there an empty seat over there? Drive over there. But over there, the servant scratched his cheek and wanted to say something. But the Viscount lost his patience. He banged his hand on the side of the boat and gave the order. Steer over there. Could anyone dare to stop the Viscount? Xiang City Port, Niu Wu reports the situation. Officer, someone has broken into the port. Officer, upon hearing this, immediately gave the order and sent someone to report. Understood. The announcement was made. Warning. Warning. Ahead is the naval port. No entry allowed. Viscount Lip heard the announcement and still disdainfully gave the order. Continue to advance. I don't believe it. What dare they do to us? Ngundu observed that the notice was useless. He turned to ask the captain for advice. The captain. The ship did not listen. It continued to move forward. The announcement continued. Second warning, the port ahead is a naval port. No entry allowed. Please stop the boat immediately. The officer standing behind also saw this. He said loudly with a serious face. Bring out your weapons. The entire group of people on duty at the dock immediately said in unison, yes, everyone got into position, pulled their crossbows, and aimed at the boat that passed through the gate. Prepared to fire. The attendant observed this. He stammered and pointed towards the dock, signaling Viscount Lip. My lord, look over there. The Viscount turned his head to look in the direction indicated. A second later, his face turned pale and he shouted, stop. We are messengers sent by the fourth prince. A cold shot rang out. Arrows were fired immediately. To Lip's horror, Viscount Lip's ship soon emitted a column of black smoke. The boat had just reached the shore. Count Lip immediately became angry and shouted. How dare you do that? Me. I am a nobleman. The chief officer did not care. He picked up the paper and asked. Full name. Where are you from? What are you doing in Taeduong City? Viscount Lip, who was standing behind the servant, answered loudly. I, I am Viscount Lip. I have come from Somalia City. I bring the orders of the fourth prince to Lu Fong. Lip tore off the paper wrapping the order. He let out a snort. He wanted to threaten with an order. But unfortunately, in this western city, nothing other than regulations mattered. The chief officer coldly demanded. Pay the fine quickly. One gold coin. What, Viscount Lip was surprised, one gold coin, I am a Viscount of the Empire. The atmosphere suddenly became heavy. The western city supervisor saw that the Viscount had no intention of paying, so they darkened their faces and threatened. Of course. They could also not pay. But the consequences would be breaking into a military restricted area. Then go to the mine and dig for or for three months. At this moment, Viscount Lip could not help but be frightened. He hastily responded. Submit. I submit. On the streets of Xiang City, people were walking back and forth on the white road. There were only two lonely figures on the large brick paved road. Damn it. Find me. And even dare to take away my weapon. You guys don't know how to fight back. Viscount Lip was trembling with anger as he cursed. As for the follower next to him, from beginning to end, he could only explain to calm his master down. My lord. Look at their equipment. With those small knives of ours, how can we fight back against them? The Viscount heard this and shouted even louder. How dare you quibble? The little servant replied. No, I don't dare. In the end, the Viscount let this go and said, let's go find that Lu Fong. The attendant glanced around and found it strange, and couldn't help but wonder. Hey, why are there so many people taking the small road over there? Why aren't they taking the main road? Hearing this, Viscount Lip boasted that he might be making way for the nobles. As soon as he finished speaking, he was hit by a passing carriage. Ah, oh, my lord, be careful. The carriage passed by without stopping. The Viscount's anger flared up again. He shouted at the carriage. Damn it, you almost hit me. At this moment, a whistle sounded. Disappeared and shouted loudly. What are you guys doing? Don't you want to live anymore? Don't use the pedestrian lane. Why use the carriage lane? Viscount Lip heard this and asked suspiciously. A carriage road? Which carriage road? The passers-by around heard this question and started to mock each other. Countless words surrounded Viscount Lip and the other two. It made both of them confused. The carriage road was of course only for carriages to travel. 
This was also not understood. The outsiders were honestly stupid. This guy is really stupid. He doesn't even understand basic knowledge. He looks like he's a noble. Shameful. Horses and carriages aren't allowed to stop on carriage roads. Yet they're still traveling on carriage roads. If they die, that's fine. But don't drag other people into it. D spoke up to keep order. She took out her ticket and wrote down the penalty. Okay. Okay. Violation of the rules. Breaking into the carriage path. Here is your ticket. Remember this lesson. Don't enter the carriage path again. Viscount Lip took the paper. His face turned pale again. Another fine. Me. I am a noble. The scene returned to the western city lord's mansion. Nina and Ellie's voices rang out. Young master, I want it. I want it too. In the room, Lu Feng was helpless but his tone was indulgent. Okay. Okay. For you guys. So delicious. Young master, what kind of fruit is this? Nina was still holding the fruit in the tray on the table. After tasting it, she turned around and asked. Lu Feng calmly replied. This is called strawberry. Wait until we have time. I plan to plant it in our western city. Ellie was happy to hear that. Then won't we have something to eat forever? Suddenly, Nicole appeared and announced. Young master, a noble is looking for you. Lu Feng exclaimed and asked. Noble? Who is that? Of course, Nicole didn't know the answer either. No, but I heard about working with you. He has something you really want. Outside the waiting room, a man was sitting. His expression was extremely tense. His hands were neatly folded on the wooden table. He was Baron Hanna. The servant beside him had a face that was not much better than Hanna's. He turned around and asked, My lord, do you think Lord Lufong will be willing to meet us? It's not easy to meet him now. Baron Hanna lowered her head, sweating nervously but still replied. I don't know, but we must meet him. Only he can save Chi Tu now. Don't you see how Blackwater City looks now? It's all because of Lu Feng's connections, so no matter what, we must cooperate with him. Yes, the sensible servant replied. Baron Hanna still had one more thing in mind. Furthermore, he was afraid that now in the entire western region, he was the only one who had salt. Then suddenly, Baron Hanna sat up straight. Her eyes were filled with surprise. Lord Lu Feng. Lu Feng appeared, followed by Nicole. He smiled politely and said, It's nothing, sit down. Baron Hanna was not in the mood to sit down at this time. He immediately took a box and walked towards Lu Feng, bowing and saying, My Lord Lu Feng. I am the Lord of Red Earth City. Hanna, this is a small token of my appreciation for you. I hope you will accept it. The box was clearly brought before Lu Feng. Inside the box was a very large blue gemstone. Lu Feng looked at it without changing his expression and said, Your Excellency Hanna, this gift is quite precious. City Lord Hanna smiled wryly. Ha, Your Highness Lu Feng, please accept this. Lu Feng reached out and closed the box. He asked directly. Okay, let's not talk nonsense anymore, Hanna. What do you want from me? Hanna, the city lord, finally did not beat around the bush and immediately stated her intention. I want to cooperate with your excellency Lu Feng, mainly I want the items of the western city. Especially salt. Lu Feng heard this but did not show any surprise. He slowly replied. Oh, so it seems like a business cooperation. But I heard that Chi Tu City's finances have always been in trouble. I heard that Chi Tu City has not made any profit in the past few years. Forgive me for being so presumptuous. I want to know if Chi Tu City really has gold coins to pay for goods. Hearing this, the Lord of Red Earth City broke out in a cold sweat. His face fell. He had barely managed to say a word when Lu Feng spoke up and refused. City Lord Hanna. I cannot accept this gift. You should go back. Lu Feng, I am willing to cooperate with anyone. But we must cooperate equally. Lu Feng turned around and left. Such a situation made Hanna City Lord muster up the courage to shout loudly. Your Excellency Lu Feng. Please stop. Although we in Zix those city have no money. But we have minerals. Moreover, they are minerals that you have been searching for a long time. Perhaps he got what he wanted. Lu Feng immediately turned his head and pretended to be surprised. Oh. City Lord Hanna continued to explain. Our Red Earth City has an iron ore. It is a vein with extremely large iron content. It probably won't be able to be dug out in decades. If there are iron ores, why don't you mine them yourself? 
As long as you can develop the economy of Chi Tu City, it won't be too bad. Lu Feng seemed a little incredulous as he asked. City Lord Hanna did not hide anything. He answered frankly. Without hiding anything from His Excellency Lu Feng, I also tried mining. But I could not increase the output. I also injured many people. Then I was worried that it would be exposed. Other nobles would take a fancy to it. It would harm my people. I could only seal it off. Lu Feng heard that and patiently asked again. Then why do you dare to tell me now? Aren't you afraid that I will compete with you? Hana immediately explained. Your Excellency Lu Feng. Actually, I just probed you. If Your Excellency Lu Feng had just rejected me and taken my gems, then I might not have told you about the iron ore. All the nobles I have met so far have been greedy. They hate not being able to swallow everything. But you don't do that. Of course, you're not their type. So I believe you're a noble with a conscience. At this moment, Lu Feng finally smiled. He cheerfully agreed to the request. Then let's discuss our cooperation. Received approval. The Lord of Red Earth couldn't hide his joy. Okay, okay. The three of them continued to sit down at the negotiating table. Lu Feng asked first. How many people are there in your Red Earth city? City Lord Hanna answered honestly. About three to four thousand people. Hearing the answer, Lu Feng continued. Okay, I will send someone to show you how to mine ore. I will invest in opening an iron smithy. You provide us with iron for smelting. Lu Feng, do you want to smelt iron near Chi Tu City? Hanna asked. Yes, anyway, transporting iron ore back is really a waste of effort. When the time comes, I will arrange for someone to teach everyone the techniques. When the time comes, it will depend on the amount of iron ore you provide. I will use the goods and a portion of the salt as my salary. How about that? The Western City Lord kept proposing terms of cooperation. City Lord Hannah happily agreed after listening. No problem. The partnership was established. Lu Feng and City Lord Hannah both stood up and shook hands. Then let's have a happy cooperation. Young master, here are the documents you need. Ellie brought a piece of paper from the study and gave it to Lu Feng. Lu Feng took out the document and continued speaking to the Lord of Red Earth. Your Excellency Hannah, I have another cooperation here. Are you interested? Hannah picked up the document Lu Feng gave her and read it. Then he couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. Ah, this, this is. Your Excellency Lu Feng, this is me, this is. It has a bit of the scent of the earthworm flower. The royal capital is over there. However, Lu Feng did not let Hannah feel embarrassed. He spoke up to reassure her. Your Excellency Hannah, it's okay if you don't agree. Our cooperation will still proceed. As a city lord of a city, what benefits does Hannah know of this cooperation? He hurriedly explained. Your Excellency Lu Feng misunderstood me. I just want to confirm that I did not misunderstand you. If that is the case, then there is only one answer. Hannah, the city lord, picked up the pen and signed the document. From today on, we will be on the same boat. After sending off the people from Chitu City, Lu Feng leaned against the glass window with his arms crossed. Ellie stood next to him and analyzed the situation. Young master, just like that, the first phase of our military port plan is half complete. Lu Feng nodded and added. Yes, as long as we complete the military port plan, our army can conquer more than half of the western region through the border gate. By then, the western region will be in our hands. Then the only ones left are Mar City and Michelle City. Young master, although we have sent out invitations to the two city lords, it seems that they have no intention of going to Xiang City. Please tell me why. Ellie was a little sad and lowered her tail because she did not understand why. Lu Feng was the opposite. He sat down on the sofa in a comfortable position and said. It's very simple, they are observing. Observing? Observing what? Ellie also slowly walked over and sat next to the city lord. Lu Feng still calmly explained. Of course, we are waiting for an opportunity to see whether we should rely on us or the fourth prince. So do we need to invite them again? No need. I don't want them to feel special. Ask me for all sorts of things later. Fine. The matter is quickly dismissed. Ellie handed the green notebook with the fox on it to Lu Feng. That's right, young master, I have a plan related to the port plan, I hope you will take a look. Lu Feng was surprised, so fast, but also sat up straight and read the plan. Very good, maybe, quite complete. Really, Ellie was secretly happy to hear Lu Feng continue. But the structure is a bit small. Just relying on commerce to bind them to become our people is not enough, but there is still great progress. I will add the following part. 
Ellie heard Lu Feng's words later, her cheeks puffed up with a slightly angry expression, Humph, next time I do it, I definitely don't need the young master to supplement. Lu Feng immediately spoke up to encourage her, but to show appreciation for Ellie's progress, I decided to give her a reward. Is there anything she wants? Ellie's eyes immediately lit up like stars as she asked, really? Of course, Lu Feng replied, go ahead, what do you want? Ellie shyly stuttered, that, young master, I, I just need something that belongs to me only, something that no one else has, okay? Proprietary property? No problem, I agree. Thank you, young master, Ellie looked delighted. Mina, who had sharp ears, could not help but feel jealous from behind. Well done Ellie. Wanting to think of a way to monopolize the young master. Ellie was pressed on both sides of Mina's head and angrily shouted, Mina, you're so annoying, look at the 18 cat palms. Mina and Ellie fought, Lu Feng sat there watching this scene as if he was used to it, so he immediately brought up something else. Speaking of which, it was almost time for Leia and the others to return. Mina, Ellie, you two clean up, follow me to the Air Force barracks to pick them up, Mina and Ellie immediately stopped the battle, and joined forces. Yes, young master. The next day, on the streets of Xiang City, a horse-drawn carriage was moving. The surrounding townspeople saw the familiar carriage and shouted, look quickly, that's the city lord's carriage. Greetings, city lord. This count lip was also in the group watching, seeing someone shouting to greet the city lord, he was surprised, what, Lu Feng's carriage, quickly, quickly stop it. The attendant immediately received the order, yes, then ran up waving his hand and shouting loudly, stop the carriage, quickly stop the carriage. The surrounding people saw this and were very indignant. They ran up to the attendant and shouted, dare to block the city lord's carriage? Too insolent. How hateful. Dare to barge into the city lord's carriage. This count lip saw his men being stopped and immediately rushed forward to argue, what are you doing, daring to stop my men, a bunch of commoners who don't want to live anymore. But those people were not pushovers either, the two sides directly argued, it turned out that he had sent someone to break into the city lord's carriage, one look and you could tell he was not a good person, and beat him up. Lu Feng on the carriage saw the chaos and gave the order to stop the carriage. Lord City Lord, Sink approached and was ordered by Lu Feng to go see what was going on. He quickly accepted the order and walked towards the crowd, making way. Seeing this, the people proactively moved aside. Some even shouted, the Lord City Lord has sent someone, make way. This Count Lip and his attendants were now beaten until their faces were bruised and swollen, their previous arrogant appearance was no longer recognizable. He angrily clenched his fist and threatened, you commoners, dare to attack the nobles, I will hang you to death. Sink looked at the two and asked, who are you? This Count Lip was even more annoyed when he heard that. I am a noble, I am a Viscount, I receive orders from His Highness the Fourth Prince. Lu Feng seemed to have heard the Viscount's shout as well, so he called out from afar, Sink, bring someone over here. The two Viscount's lip and his subordinates were brought before Lu Feng. He spoke up to confirm, you are the person sent by the fourth prince. Yes, Viscount Lip once again confirmed his identity, I am the person sent by the fourth prince. His Highness ordered people to go to Somalia City first. Lu Feng sighed softly and said, I don't have that obligation, right? I'm not the noble he appointed me to be. The Viscount was very angry when he heard that. What? Baron Lu Feng, you better think carefully. His Highness has more than 2,000 knights. Lu Feng still shrugged his shoulders after hearing this. He left a sentence and then turned back into the car. Just a loser dog. Let's go. Sink immediately urged the horse to drive away. Leaving the angry Viscount who could only look at the dust and smoke from the carriage and curse loudly. Lu Feng, you, you will regret it. His Highness's cavalry will level this place. Before he could finish his scolding, the Viscount suddenly felt a chill down his spine. He glanced back slightly. Dozens of eyes from the Westerners were looking at him with unfriendly eyes. They all shouted in unison, get lost, at the two of them. Back to the castle lord's carriage. Mina sat in the carriage, feeling very upset. Young master. Are you going to let them off so easily? Why don't you let me kill them? Lu Feng smiled and rubbed his chin, calculating. He had to survive and return. He wanted to see what the fourth prince would do next. Would he attack or continue to attract other city lords? Ellie understood Lu Feng's intention. She spoke up to confirm. I understand, young master. You want to put some pressure on those city lords who are still watching? Yes, Lu Feng replied. We are dragging each city one by one, it is really too slow. As soon as today's matter gets out, the four city lords will know. I am forcing them to choose a team. Ellie, spread today's matter, let the city lords of all four cities know. We are not compatible with the fourth prince. Ellie quickly wrote it down in her notebook and replied yes. The sky was getting dark, the crescent moon was rising high above the mountain peaks. 
below was the Yutui River gently flowing by. In the air at this time were hot air balloons, with a few silhouettes of people flying beside them. A black-winged birdman turned to advise the white-haired girl, Leia, the leader. You've flown for a day, rest. No need, we're almost there. Everyone, please be patient. Yes, the people on the hot air balloon replied. But perhaps because they had been flying for so long, they couldn't help but feel a little tired. A little child couldn't stand it and started whining. How much longer? Oh, it smells so good. The green-haired man sniffed it and drooled. The others who had also smelled it couldn't help but be curious. What was this smell? It was so fragrant. Look, that city was so bright. Wow, really, it was so bright. It was also big, were all human cities this prosperous at night? The atmosphere on this hot air balloon suddenly became lively. There was no longer any feeling of fatigue. Was it almost there? Leia looked at the balloon, unable to hide her smile. On the hot air balloon, everyone was thinking about their future lives. A purple-haired bird turned to the person standing next to him and said. All right, are we going to live in a city like this from now on? Feeling a bit nervous. The blue-haired person immediately replied. What's so nervous about? Didn't the leader say? This place treats the beastmen very well. Leia saw that they were there. She raised her voice to gather everyone. All right, everyone get ready. We're almost there. Here it comes. Everyone cheers with delight. Below the balloon is an empty field to land on. Ellie raised her hand and made a faraway gesture, then announced. They're here. They're here. Flay beside her could not hide her joy. She called out. Sister. Everyone on the hot air balloon landed safely. The smell of grilled meat wafting out made people hungrier. Bird friends. Looking at it makes me cry and drool. Lu Fong immediately greeted her as soon as he appeared. Welcome back. Flay immediately ran out and called out, sister, with a happy face, Leia hugged Flay. She bowed slightly to the western city lord. Your Excellency Lu Fong. Seeing her smile, Lu Fong did not hesitate to compliment her. She smiled so beautifully. Leia was not very happy when she heard that. She frowned and glared. Your Excellency Lu Fong. You. Perhaps she realized she had misspoken. Lu Fong laughed easily. Ha ha ha. Sorry. Sorry. The awkward atmosphere disappeared. Lu Fong turned to the others and said sincerely to them. Everyone, you have come a long way. These grilled meats are a cleansing feast for everyone. Everyone, please eat as much as you want. Wow, the people below were delighted when they heard this. They immediately joined in the barbecue party. They ate and exclaimed. This meat is so fragrant. The leader did not lie to us. So good, Flay also bragged while eating. Of course, the food in Taeduong City is the best in the world. Lu Fong now held a plate of grilled meat and handed it to Leia. He said to her. Very good choice. Isn't it? Yes, Leia replied. Lu Fong continued to speak. Others. You can also come over here. The mountain on the other side can be divided for everyone to live. I have investigated. There is also a water source. The road down the mountain is also convenient. Suitable for you bird clans to fly. Okay. Leia nodded. Hearing that, Lu Fong continued. As for the children. Go to school and learn to read. We'll see what they think later. Leia continued to answer, okay. This made Lu Fong a little confused about what to say next. Seeing the silence, Leia asked. What's wrong? Lu Fong answered honestly. A little curious. It seemed like she was very obedient to me today. No matter what, she didn't have any objections. Leia shrugged. Laughing, she explained. I can tell good from bad. I have always wanted to take good care of my people. You have arranged it very well. Of course I will not object. But if one day you do wrong to our bird tribe, then I will have my own choice. Lu Feng heard that and laughed loudly. Promise firmly. That day will not come. Leia picked up a piece of meat and ate it. She also did not forget to say. Don't say it too soon. After finishing the meat, Leia suddenly remembered something. She turned to ask. That's right. Before you go. What do you want me to do? No rush. Lu Feng said. Everyone just arrived in Xiyang City today. Take these two days to rest first. After all, health is the most important. Leia understood and didn't ask any more. 
She just sighed to Lu Feng. I don't know if you're a good or bad person. Forget it. Anyway, no matter what. I will remember your kindness in my heart. I will repay you well. Not knowing what Flay did, Leia cried out. Ah, Flay, what are you doing? Flay immediately replied. Sis, the young master is mine. You can't take him away. Her sister's words made Leia blush and deny. What nonsense. I didn't mean it. I, I'm leaving. On the other side. Ellie looked at the scene before her eyes and asked with some doubt. So it's okay? This bird tribe. Integrating and accepting is quite easy, right? Aren't they the beastmen most wary of humans? Could it be? This is the culinary strategy that the young master mentioned. Mina took this opportunity to remind him, intentionally or not. Why not? Ellie, don't forget how you looked before. You're not much better than them. Ellie was so embarrassed that she was angry. What? Mina, shut up. If you say anything more, try my fist. Knowing that Ellie had just picked up the grilled meat with her bare hands, Mina immediately felt disgusted. Ah, her hands were so greasy. Take it away. And so another battle between the two broke out. That same night, at the forge of the royal capital, Jones reported the situation. Her Highness Lucy, the investigation has been completed. A month later, the crown prince ascended the throne. Princess Lucy heard that and immediately replied. Um, good. Then starting tomorrow. I must let the truth about Lucia wanting to kill father spread out. I must let everyone in the royal capital know that the eldest prince is an unfilial son who killed father to ascend to the throne. I don't believe that the greedy nobles won't be moved. Jones was a little worried. But princess, just like that. The news of the people in the royal capital will be known by the first prince. Lucy knew that but didn't care. She comforted him. It's okay. Take a rest tomorrow. I want to go to Taeduan City. The beastman's ears were very sharp. Heard a sound. She gestured. Silence. Lucy asked suspiciously. Jones, what's going on? Someone was approaching. Jones replied. There was a sound of metal clashing. The movement was very slight. The number was probably 50, 60 people. Jones discovered that their location had been discovered. He immediately shouted. Not good. Your Highness Lucy. We've been exposed. What? Jones couldn't think much and asked for permission. Your Highness Lucy. I'll take you out. But Princess Lucy did not respond. Jones called back suspiciously. Your Highness Lucy. Lucy finally made up her mind. She clasped her hands and said. Jones. You go. With your strength, you can go. They dare to come. It shows that they are fully prepared. You take me with you. You will not escape. Jones' face could not hide his uneasiness. No, he might fall into the hands of the crown prince. Lucy immediately reassured him. It's okay. He won't do anything to me. He'll just imprison me. Then he'll use me as a card in his hand. Didn't Lu Feng send someone to save Catherine? When the time comes, they'll save me together. Jones gritted his teeth and refused to leave. A voice came from outside the door. Open the door and check. Uncle Ely, the forge owner asked in panic. What are you guys doing? Lucy quickly urged Jones. Hurry. Don't worry about me. Finally Jones agreed. Before leaving, she turned back and promised firmly. Your Highness Lucy. Wait for me. The door suddenly flew open. The person who opened it immediately shouted. Found it. Here. Lucy was quickly surrounded by soldiers. The white-haired old man said with a fake smile. Your Highness, please follow me. His Highness the Crown Prince wishes to see you. In front of him, the Forge Master and Yuffie were blocked by swords. Princess Lucy compromised but not before demanding. I can go but I have to release my friend. The white-haired old man did not reply much. Of course, they were not our target. After releasing the two, he continued. Let's go. Your Highness. Princess Lucy followed them back. She turned back before saying goodbye. Her eyes were filled with tears. Yuffie, Uncle Ely, I've troubled everyone these past few days. Yuffie nervously clasped her hands together. But could only call out one word. Lucy, watching the princess being taken away. Royal Palace, Royal Capital. Lucy was brought back. Laughter echoed through the empty space. 
Ha ha ha, my little sister. We meet again. It's the Crown Prince Lucia. Lucy replied contemptuously. Disgusting, who is your sister? Crown Prince Lucia snorted and ordered the guards. Humph, stubborn, take her down. Keep an eye on her. Without my orders, she is not allowed to leave the room. Lucy was taken away by two soldiers. The Grand Prince Lucia turned back and asked the white-haired man. Is there another beast man? He replied. We will send someone to hunt him down. Lucia heard that and gritted her teeth to emphasize. Remember, I want to live. Yes. He continued. This time, your high priest has done a good job, rest assured. I will arrange the orders of the church. As long as you continue to help this prince, I can reward you all. The white-haired old man bowed his head respectfully and replied, Of course, we will continue to help your highness ascend the throne. Good then. Step back. Yes. The crown prince watched the other person leave. Leaning on his cane. His eyes were like someone looking down from above. Humph. At the Marquis's mansion. The white-haired old man who had just left appeared in the room. He bowed to the person in front of him and saluted. Venice, Your Excellency the Archbishop. The person in front of him immediately gave an order. Stand up. How is the plan going? The white-haired old man did not stand up yet but still bowed his head and reported. Prince Lucia agreed to the conditions I proposed. He has begun to obey the church's orders. The Patriarch of Venice saw that everything was going according to plan. He was full of praise. Very good. Finally, the light of God can shine upon the world. God bless. Master. Lucia seems to be a little wary of us. I'm worried it will affect future plans. The white-haired old man reported further. The Cardinal of Venice doesn't care about him. He said. Don't mind him. As long as he relies on us, he won't do anything stupid. Moreover, if Lucia goes too far, we can change the emperor. After all, the old emperor's son is not only him. The white-haired old man nodded upon hearing this. A scheming smile appeared on his lips. The sect master was right. Old Venice continued to give other instructions. Find someone to pay attention to the whereabouts of Amos's notes. We originally released the map to cause some trouble. But now there is still no response from anywhere. The archbishop is also a little dissatisfied. The white-haired old man raised his hand to show that he was obeying the order. The last time Amos's handwriting appeared was in the west of Tanging City. I will send someone to follow up on this matter. After giving instructions on everything, the Archbishop of Venice gave the order, so he withdrew and prepared to leave. Yes, Archbishop. The old subordinate bowed respectfully and then withdrew. Xiang City's mansion. Study room, Lu Feng sat on the chair at the desk. Beside him was Ellie. On the opposite side were Lelisa and Leia. After the barbecue party, he asked again. Your Excellency Lu Feng, can you tell us what the plan is now? Lu Feng did not prolong the situation. He said, my friends, Princess Lucy and Catherine are locked up in the royal capital. I want to save them. Leia, I need everyone's bird tribe people to help save people. Leia naturally did not refuse to answer. No problem. Lu Feng turned to Lelisa and gave instructions. Lelisa, your sniper squad should also act together. You understand the royal capital well, and can be of great help to make the plan a success. Lelisa accepted the order. Understood, Lord. Lu Feng continued to speak solemnly. In addition, Sink's Wolf Warrior Squad and the Air Force soldiers have all joined this battle. I only have one request. Bring the person back here without any injuries. After finishing the plan, Lu Feng turned back to Mina and said, Take Leia and the others to choose equipment. Yes, young masters Mina led Leia and Lelisa to the warehouse of Xiang City. When they arrived, Mina opened the door to let the three of them in. Here, so many exquisite and sturdy armors and weapons. Leia just entered and saw the things in the room and couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. Mina heard that and immediately explained. The young master said that pure iron armor is too heavy. It is not good for the bird race to fly. So he had prepared lighter armor earlier. Then Mina gave the armor to Leia. Leia took the things Mina handed her. Her words were filled with doubt. She spoke as if she knew we would agree. She looked at the thing in her hand. She wondered what kind of defense it had. Mina heard Leia say that and affirmed with certainty. The young master's eyes were never wrong. She could test his defenses. Leia immediately took the knife and poked a test line on the armor. Indeed powerful. It left no trace behind. If this were sold on the black market, how many gold coins would it be worth? 
Thinking like that, Leia turned back and asked in wonder. Can I really take these things? Equip my people. Of course, Nina replied. These things were originally prepared for everyone. Hearing this, Leia's eyes flashed with sadness. If these were the things she had when she first hunted dragons, not many of her clansmen would have had to be sacrificed. Lelisa had already chosen her weapon. She was holding a golden bow. She smiled and said, I'll take this one. Leia looked at the bow Lelisa was holding and couldn't help but make a few comments. This bow's shape didn't seem to be like a normal bow. Can I have a look? Lelisa gave the bow to Leia without hesitation. She also explained that this is called counterbow. It was invented by the city lord. Leia, the bowstring tester, commented. I didn't expect Lu Feng to have the ability to make weapons. The bowstring is too stiff. There's no way a normal person could use such a bow. The young master naturally knew about this. So he also designed and manufactured a weapon called a crossbow. Normal people could use it. Nina raised the crossbow with a proud expression. Leia unconsciously frowned and expressed, this is a weapon, something so small, the force of an iron spear should not be great. Seeing is believing, Nina resolutely pointed the crossbow at Leia, telling her she could give it a try. As soon as she finished speaking, an arrow was suddenly shot out. Fortunately, Leia reacted quickly and immediately dodged to the side. At this moment, the arrow was firmly embedded in the iron shield. Leia looked pale. Hey, this is too dangerous. Nina smiled and put away her crossbow. I trust Leia's skills. Leia was still a little dissatisfied with her actions just now. She said, why does this expression of hers resemble Lu Feng's? But, Leia turned back to look at the arrow piercing through the iron shield and couldn't help but sigh. This crossbow's arrow could even pierce through an iron plate. Nina proudly showed off, the young master said, this will soon be equipped on a large scale for the soldiers. Hearing Nina say that, Leia's expression became a little serious. She thought, wouldn't that become a nightmare for all enemies? Return to the Xiang city governor's mansion, study. Nina had already returned to report to Lu Feng. Lelisa, they have already set off for the royal capital. If they get there, our people will be in charge of providing support. News will also be sent back periodically. Thank you everyone. Next, wait for their good news. Hopefully, everything goes smoothly. Lu Feng replied after listening to the report. At the desk, Ellie was having trouble because the candle kept going out. Nina Tay used a match to light it and gave instructions. Young master, you and Ellie too. Pay attention to rest. Don't watch political events tonight. Such dark light is not good for your eyes. Ellie tired. Leaned back in her chair and groaned. Helpless. Too much has happened lately. Too much to fix. I'm too busy. Lu Feng thought for a moment after hearing this. The lighting was not good. I thought of something good. It can be used in the castle then. Nina couldn't help but be curious. What did the young master think of again? Lu Feng had a mysterious expression. Everyone will know by then. It will definitely be a pleasant surprise. Nina and Ellie did not hear the answer. Both of their faces were a bit disappointed. It was time to return to Earth. Moreover, the gift promised to Ellie before must also be prepared. Lu Feng thought to himself. The next day, still at the Tae Duong City's mansion. The location was the dining room. Nicole walked away with the tray of dishes. Ellie saw that there weren't many people at the table so she asked, where are the others? Nicole quickly replied to her. They had left early in the morning. Everyone had been very busy lately. Ellie agreed with that. Her ears drooped down tiredly. That's right. There really have been a lot of things happening recently. The development of Tae Duong City is gradually getting on track. But there are also more miscellaneous things. The daily tasks I have to do are as numerous as a small mountain. Nicole saw that she was in a bad mood and smiled to comfort her. Everyone was very grateful to Miss Ellie. Without Miss Ellie, Tae Duong City would not be what it is today. Ellie was complimented and embarrassed. Her face turned red. She tried to act like nothing happened but her tail was wagging nonstop. It wasn't that good. I had to keep trying. Ellie quickly regained her composure. Her face was full of energy to start a new day. Keep going. Seeing Ellie's mood return to normal, Nicole also smiled with relief. Lu Feng came out of the dining room after Ellie left, so when he saw Nicole, he asked, where is Ellie? Nicole replied while holding the tea tray. Miss Ellie just went out. Hearing that, Lu Feng immediately called everyone out to carry out a secret mission. Everyone quickly arranged their plans and waited for Ellie to come back to surprise her. 
Everyone looked excited, raised their hands in the air, and made a determined gesture, and in unison let out a loud oh. The moon was clear and the wind was cool. Under the bright moonlight, Miss Ellie was holding a lantern and standing in the farm area, talking to the farm manager of Tae Duong City. She said to him. This planting machine is for you. Use it well. This is the young master's own design. The farm manager said. Miss Ellie. Leave it to me. With the divine artifact the city lord has given us, I guarantee this year's harvest will be bountiful. Ha 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 ha. Where did Avery come rushing to the farm from? She called Ellie. Your Highness. Your Highness. Whom? Princess reply. What did you call me for? Avery ran over and grabbed Princess Ellie's hand. Princess Ellie asked Avery in surprise. Avery, what's so urgent? I have a lot of things to arrange. I'm very busy. Oh, you just follow me first. I'll tell you soon. As Avery said that, he pulled Princess Ellie's hand and walked away. Princess Ellie's face was like. I don't know what's going on. It's late at night and you're dragging me around. My legs are so tired. At this time, in the hall of the city lord's mansion, Ellie entered the hall, the whole room was dark and mysterious. Ellie asked Avery curiously. Avery, what's going on? Didn't you say everyone had something urgent to discuss with me? Why didn't anyone turn on the lights? Avery was embarrassed and hesitantly said. This must be. Maybe. Aha. Ellie saw Avery's expression. She snapped. Are you guys hiding something from me? Tell me now. Avery. At this moment, City Lord Lu Fong snapped his fingers, and the entire room lit up. Ellie was surprised and stunned, she stood frozen in the middle of the palace hall. She said, oh this is. Then everyone said in unison. Ellie, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Lu Fong also stepped forward, approached Ellie and said, Ellie, happy birthday to you. Ellie was surprised and suddenly realized, her face turned red. That's right, today is my birthday. Oh my god. Ellie was moved to tears, city lord Lu Fong gently patted her head. Why cry, birthday parties should be fun. Ellie shyly raised her hand to rub her eyes. Why cry? It's just dust in my eyes. Besides, who asked everyone to prepare a birthday party for me? Me, me. Nina happily replied after hearing that. As the young master, he suggested the organization. He said that Ellie had been working very hard recently. He must reward her to encourage her spirit. Lu Feng also happily continued with Mina. After all, it was something I promised Ellie. I can't forget it. Ellie was touched and thought to herself. I didn't expect the young master to remember my birthday even though he was so busy. Even though she thought that and was so grateful, Ellie said, hmm. Meddling in other people's business. At this moment, Nicole held a string of sparkling light bulbs in her hand. She curiously picked it up and asked the city Lord Lu Feng. Young master, what is this? Why does it glow so brightly? Lu Feng replied excitedly. It's an electric light. It's something that needs an electric source to glow. Everyone looked at it with wide eyes and exclaimed wow wow. This is so awesome. This is the first time in the world that I have seen something so amazing, glowing without the need for the sun. At this moment, Ellie pointed to the generator. She said, is that the electricity that the young master is talking about? Only then will the lights come on. Right? Lu Feng replied enthusiastically to Ellie. That's right. There are electric lights. Life in this western city will become better and better. There is no limit to the time it lights up. It's convenient and also protects the environment. Nicole clapped her hands, her face bright and expectant. This was good, she said. This was the last evening without the dim candles. Via also shouted happily. She was no longer afraid of the candle falling and causing a fire. Ha ha. City Lord Lu Feng was secretly delighted. Now we only brought a generator. We also have to get the fuel from Earth. When the technology in Xiang City develops in the future, refrigerators and air conditioners will make everyone even more excited. After listening to Nicole and Vaya, Lu Feng happily continued. Electric lights are convenient, but using electricity can be very dangerous at times. First of all, the human body conducts electricity, and if the electric current touches it, it could be life-threatening. So, don't touch it out of curiosity. Ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, so scary. Everyone heard it, and imagined that they were struck by lightning. Everyone was shocked in the sky. Nicole said in fear. Young master, electric lights are so dangerous, why don't we use them anymore? 
Lu Feng smiled wryly, as if he was already starting to get scared just by doing that. He said to Nicole. It's okay, as long as you pay attention to safety when using it, it will be fine. Furthermore, I'm planning to ask teacher Via to select a few skilled students. It's best to install an electric machine in every room in this castle. Via happily obeyed. Yes, I understand, young master. Lu Feng smiled and replied. Then I will leave it to you. Lu Feng continued to think to himself. It seems that if he wants them to get used to this, he will need some more time. But it is good to be a little cautious. Then he cheerfully said to everyone. All right, everyone. Everyone is hungry. Let's start the party quickly or the food will get cold. Deez and Avery each had a huge chicken leg and devoured it with relish. Flay and Nina fought over the piece of cake that was spreading its sweet aroma. Ellie happily picked up a piece of fried dumpling for the city lord Lu Feng. At this moment Nicole walked into the room, in her hand was a beautiful birthday cake. She exclaimed. Here comes the birthday cake. Wow, so many lollipops. So cute. City Lord Lu Feng hurriedly urged Ellie. Come on Ellie, hurry up and make a wish. Then, Princess Ellie clasped her hands and closed her eyes and started to make a wish. Everyone was silent, watching Ellie silently making a wish. Phew. Ellie had just blown out the candles when Lu Feng asked. What did Ellie wish for? Ellie was embarrassed, her face blushing as she replied. Hee hee, of course I can hope for the young master. Well, I can't say it. If I say it, it will lose its effectiveness. Lu Feng was nonchalant. All right, I won't say anything more. Then, Lu Feng said. Ellie, this is my birthday present for you. After speaking, Lu Feng reached out and opened the wooden box. Inside was a mysterious black round object. Ellie exclaimed. What is this? Nina was also surprised. Oh my, the young master gave Ellie a black star ball. Lu Feng quickly explained. Hmm, this is a star lantern. Nicole, quickly help me turn off the light. Nicole replied. Yes. Then, she turned off the lights, and the room suddenly became dark. Lu Feng turned on the star lamp. Wow, this star lamp turned out to be a lamp that illuminated the solar system and the twelve constellations of the zodiac. The shapes of the zodiac were standing out, glowing against the gray-blue background. Dees exclaimed. So amazing. Nina's eyes also sparkled. Wow, so beautiful. Really amazing. The star lantern projected the entire Milky Way onto the ceiling of the city hall. It was like a modern projector. Everyone looked up with delight. Ellie exclaimed. It really felt like looking up at the sky and watching the stars. Lu Feng then explained. This also uses electricity. Ellie, do you like it? Ellie did not reply. She suddenly stood on her tiptoes and placed a kiss on the lips of the city Lord Lu Feng instead of her excited reply. At this moment, the space seemed to freeze. Pink air bubbles floated all over the room. So sweet. Ellie said shyly. I love it. Thank you for remembering my birthday, young master. Having said that, Ellie hugged the city Lord Lu Feng. He said to Ellie. It's good that you like it. May your new age always be as joyful and happy as it is now. At that time, in the dense forest of the capital of the kingdom of Ang Lu, Jones was anxiously waiting for Lu Feng's reinforcements to arrive. The bright yellow moonlight filtered through the leaves of the trees, illuminating Jones's expectant features. She said anxiously. Why hasn't anyone arrived yet? Is your intelligence reliable? She climbed to the top of a tall tree, anxiously waiting. A blonde soldier from Lu Feng's camp replied gently. Don't rush. It's almost time. It's almost time. He was also worried about Jones. Under the torchlight, doves fluttered to where Jones and the knight stood. The knight shouted. Here it is. Jones asked in surprise. Where? Where? In the sky. Miss Jones, look up. Jones was stunned, her expression was like what the hell. She thought to herself. Oh my god, this is a bird person. I didn't expect that Xiang City would have such a rare thing. Suddenly Jones was startled to see in the sky, besides the flying birds, there were also beautiful white birds of the bird people and most of all she saw flying cloth bags. Jones saw Lelisa. She was secretly happy. Great, Lelisa is here too. Lelisa introduced her companion to Jones as soon as she landed. Jones, this is Lady Leia. Lord Lu Feng invited them to help us carry out this rescue plan. Jones said happily. Great, with the help of the bird tribe, it will definitely succeed. Leia sighed and said. Stop talking and act now. 
Lelisa raised her hand to her chest, expressing her agreement. Okay. Jones, I told you about the plan last time. The objective this time is to rescue Lucy and Miss Catherine. This time, we also have four members of the Bird Tribe. Four members of the Wolf Warrior Squad and four elves. Jones, do you know their locations? Jones replied quickly. He had already inquired. Moreover, the Grand Prince will be holding a banquet in the palace tonight. That will be an opportunity. As for Catherine, Catherine's father will be attending the Grand Prince's banquet tonight. It will be much more convenient for us. Leia ordered. Then things cannot be delayed any longer. Let's go. Everyone answered in unison. Okay. We can't run. What's the point of flying? Jones closed her eyes in the air as Leia lifted her up and helped her fly. Leia said, don't be afraid. I won't let go, don't worry. Hmm, Jones replied fearlessly. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. Not at all, really. Leia was too bored to say anything more, leaving Jones to close his eyes in fear. At this time, in the great room of the royal capital's palace, a purple-robed duke sat on the sofa and said to Duke Kylak. Your daughter, Miss Catherine, is going to marry the crown prince. I sincerely congratulate you. Duke Kylak. Ha ha ha, thank you, but Duke Benson, I must also congratulate you. You must know that tonight's banquet is being held to announce the engagement between Princess Lucy and his son Leon. From now on, everyone will be one family. The atmosphere was ambiguous in the exchange of words between the two dukes. At this moment, in the crown prince's room, the crown prince ordered his subordinates. Go see Princess Lucy, why hasn't she appeared yet? Yes, your highness. Meanwhile, in Princess Lucy's room. The maid politely said as she presented the dress. Your highness, please cooperate. The grand prince said that if she did not participate, he would invite Miss Yuffie to keep her company. The princess was visibly angry. Hmph, this guy dared to use Yuffie to threaten me. Suddenly above the roof of the castle where the princess was, the dark shadows of Leia and her subordinates appeared. Jones told Leia, the room ahead is the room where Princess Lucy is. Oh wait, wait, Princess Lucy is over there. Look, the princess is surrounded by servants. It seems they are taking her to meet the despicable prince. Hmm, Leia calmly reassured Jones. There aren't many guards, Jones. We'll win quickly. Archers, get ready. The princess was walking among the guards. She was thinking sadly. I will not marry that Leon guy. If it really comes to that, I will kill Leon first. Then I will kill myself. Lucia, don't even think about using me to get Duke Benson's help. I just hope Jones doesn't do anything stupid at that time. The princess had not finished her thought. Strange sounds suddenly rang out. Princess Lucy was stunned and did not understand what was happening. Oh, it's Jones. She exclaimed happily. Jones ran over crying, holding the princess's hand and saying, Lucy, I'm sorry, I'm late, the two hugged each other, filled with joy and emotion. At that time, the crown prince was waiting for Lucy to arrive. He was in a hurry. Lucy, why isn't she here yet? While I was thinking, a lot of leaflets fell from the sky. The guards said loudly. Everyone look, something is falling from the sky. Hearing this, the crown prince quickly grabbed a flyer. The content on the paper was that Crown Prince Lucia was the murderer of the Inglu kingdom. Count Kylak saw the prince angrily holding a crumpled piece of paper in his hand. He said, Your Highness, I see that something has happened at the banquet. I will not bother you any longer. I will go first, the other dukes also bid farewell to the prince. Your Highness, I will take my leave first. I will do the same, everyone else left. Kylak's son Leon said to his father, Father, isn't this disrespecting the crown prince, Duke Kylak didn't care. He replied, it didn't matter who threw the paper down. Once the rumor got out, even if the crown prince succeeded in ascending the throne, it would be difficult to maintain his position. Leon, in my name, go and invite Grand Duke Benson to our mansion. Leon replied. Yes, my lord father. The crown prince now stood alone in the middle of the empty castle. He coldly watched everyone leave. As Count Kylak left, he thought to himself. If he could join forces with Count Benson, the position above, it wouldn't be impossible to give it a try. Princess Lucy was just rescued. She is now on the hot air balloon. She happily said to Jones. That's great. Now everyone knows what kind of person Lucia is. Jones quickly reminded the princess. Lucy, be careful. Don't fall down. Princess Lucy was very happy at this moment. She replied to Jones. I'm fine. I'm very happy. Speaking of which, City Lord Lu Feng is really amazing. 
Even something that can fly in the sky can be created. Then the princess turned her head and said to Jones, expressing her extreme joy. Suddenly the princess suddenly remembered, ah, where is Catherine? Has everyone rescued her? Lelisa quickly calmed Princess Lucy down. Don't worry. Another team has been arranged to go to the Duke's mansion to rescue Catherine. Wait until we get Catherine. At that time, we will gather in the sky outside the capital. Then we will return to Xiang City together. Princess Lucy said happily. That's great. Oh, and Yuffie. Lelisa was startled when she heard that and asked again. What about Yuffie? What's wrong with Yuffie? Princess Lucy clasped her hands together and continued worriedly. Can I bother you to save Yuffie? I'll just go like that. If I stay, the eldest prince will definitely take out his anger on Yuffie. Lelisa said firmly. Of course, Yuffie is our friend too. She said as she nodded in agreement with the princess's suggestion. Scene change, now in the dining room of the Inglu kingdom's eldest prince. The eldest prince is now extremely angry and shouting loudly. What? Lucy ran away too. He growled and shouted loudly. Who the hell did this? Who the hell did this? Man, his hand turned to shout at the guard. I allowed you to operate in the palace and even Lucy ran away and you didn't know. And you stood there staring at those papers appearing. It turned out that at this moment, the first prince was venting his anger on the person of the main priest in the kingdom. The angry crown prince continued to shout. It's useless, we can't even do something as small as this. What cooperation do we have left? The god lord calmly and calmly replied to the crown prince. As your friend, I should also remind you. Just now, Duke Kylak and Duke Benson seem to be discussing something. In a crucial situation like this, what do you think they would be discussing? The crown prince lost his composure at this moment. He said, Humph, forget about that little girl Lucy for now. Quickly send someone to guard those two old men for me. Also, remember to investigate clearly. Who exactly did what happened tonight? Scene change, now in Miss Catherine's room and there is a knock on the door. Miss Catherine, please go out. Grand Duke Kylak told me to come here. It turns out that the person who knocked on the door was Duke Benson's son named Leon. Miss Catherine shouted angrily from inside. Get lost, she thought angrily. I never thought that my lord father and the crown prince would collude to sabotage me, and even force me to marry the Viscount. Does my lord father completely treat me as an object to be exchanged? Viscount Leon also started to lose his temper at this time, he shouted. Lady Catherine, Duke Kylak and Duke Benson, my father, are all waiting for you at the banquet. Are you making everyone wait for you? Miss Catherine still refused to open the door. She shouted loudly. I won't go. Whoever comes, I won't go. Leon stood outside the door, his face full of contempt as he said, Miss Catherine, you were so stubborn, how can you be my wife? The young lady shouted loudly from inside the room. I will not marry you even if I die. Leon was almost out of patience at this point, he said. Miss Catherine, if that's the case, I'll tell everyone, including your father, so he can come and invite you himself. Let's see how long you can hold out. Then, Leon hurriedly led all his subordinates out of Catherine's room. Catherine sat on the bed in her room. She was trembling, looking forward and thinking, Your Excellency Lu Feng, when will you finally come to save me? I really don't want to marry someone like that. Suddenly Catherine's room. The candle was blown out and the whole room was plunged into darkness. Suddenly a whistling sound rushed past Catherine. The wind blew the curtains. She screamed in fear, who was it? Is it you, Leon, coming back to my room? Suddenly a dark shadow appeared in Catherine's room. She thought it was Leon who had come back to break into the room to take her away. She shouted at him, you've come back secretly? I won't marry you. Don't come here, I'll shout, but the dark shadow still tried to get closer to Catherine. Catherine held her guitar ready to beat Leon up. The other guy suddenly spoke up. Miss Catherine. Catherine gave him a huge blow. Bang, bang. Wow. Oh, the scream echoed throughout Kylak Citadel. Lu Feng's subordinate's head had a huge lump. Ha ha. Catherine said shyly. You should have said earlier that you were Lu Feng's men who came to save me. You don't count on Lu Feng's subordinates. He humbly replied to Catherine. It's me who didn't think carefully. I scared Miss Catherine. Ha ha that. That, Lord Lu Feng is ready, right? Or should we go now? Miss Catherine quickly changed the topic. Lu Feng's guard was also impatient. Miss, please follow me. Before she could finish speaking, there was a knock on Catherine's door. Someone called Catherine's name. It turned out to be Catherine's brother. 
He stood outside the door and shouted, My lord father told me to go to the drawing room and meet Grand Duke Benson. Miss Catherine was now standing behind Lu Feng in fear. The guard was about to attack when Catherine stopped him. She said, He is family, not the enemy. That is my brother. Catherine's brother waited for a while but got no response. He called out again, Catherine. As soon as he finished speaking, he opened the door and pushed it open. Catherine, come in. Oh my god, the room was empty. There was no one there. He was bewildered. He didn't know what to do. He cried out in panic. Where was she? Catherine was nowhere to be seen. Then, quickly ran back to the living room to inform Count Kylak and Duke Benson of the news. Several guards were found dead inside and outside the Duke's mansion. Lady Catherine was probably taken away. He continued, Duke Kylak. It seems your mansion is not safe. Duke Kylak also did not respond happily. Duke Benson, do you think in this royal capital, is there anyone who can silently take away my Duke's people? Duke Benson was startled. He meant the great prince? Wait. Was this a warning? Duke Kylak raised his hand to his chin and spoke calmly. Looking at the situation, he already knows about the matter of you and I joining forces. With that person's way of doing things, he will definitely take revenge. Duke Benson asked in panic. So what should we do now? Mr. Kylak calmly replied. In the current situation, we can only watch out for his subordinates and hold the soldiers tightly. He continued. The two dukes join forces. He alone wouldn't dare do anything, but if we were to fight each other. Humph, Duke Benson gritted his teeth and said. I know. Duke Benson thought angrily. Damn it, I shouldn't have come here tonight. Now that we're on the pirate ship, it's too late to cut ties. I'm now in the same boat as this Kylak. Right now, the sky was clear and blue, with white clouds swirling around, the air was extremely airy. Everyone who had just been rescued from the royal capital was feeling very refreshed. Wonderful, truly wonderful, Princess Lucy said happily. Yuffie was stunned and surprised. She said. How could that be? Can you fly by lighting a fire? What principle is this? Doesn't fire burn the surface of an object? All these years of research don't even compare to a fraction of this hot air balloon. Everyone was worried. They spoke loudly to Yuffie. Yuffie, stop, stop right there, don't move. Yuffie was still stubborn. She leaned forward and spoke eagerly. But I was curious. Why is that? Yuffie's uncle quickly reached out to stop Yuffie. He said. Yuffie, this place is dangerous, you know? Come down here first. Lelisa was also worried. She reached out and pulled Yuffie's shoulders down. She said to Yuffie. Yuffie, okay, calm down. We can ask the Lord about these matters when we get back to Xiyang City. Yuffie reluctantly collected herself and replied. Okay. She continued to ask curiously. But Lelisa, the city lord you mentioned, will he tell me? Lelisa replied calmly and humbly. The city lord is a good person. He will surely tell her. Yuffie replied with a sullen face. The city lord definitely wouldn't tell me such a confidential matter. It's rare to see a weapon that can actually fly with my own eyes. Jones heard this, an ellipsis appeared in his mind. Leia saw this expression. Then asked. What's wrong with you two? Jones hesitated, not wanting to say it. But then, she still asked Leia. Oh, that, do you also like Lord Lu Foam? Leia snapped back at Jones. What are you thinking? How could I like humans? Jones blushed and waved his hand. I'm sorry, because I really can't figure out why the Bird Beast tribe would help humans? Leia calmly replied. We and Lu Feng have a cooperative relationship. If you talk nonsense again, I will fly you up high and throw you down. Jones suddenly remembered the night before when Leia had let her fly and was terrified. She felt weak and replied, okay, okay, I won't say anymore. Catherine's side was unusually quiet at this moment. Princess Lucy saw this. She asked. Catherine, I'm about to meet Lu Feng, whom I've been thinking about day and night. Why is it so quiet? Catherine's eyes were spinning. Dizzy, she replied. No, no, I'm just too, too nervous. Princess Lucy replied. Relax a little. I'm afraid that when I see Lu Feng like this, I won't be able to speak. Hoo hoo, Catherine suddenly started to sob. After a long day, everyone finally flew the hot air balloon to the capital of Tai Duong City. The sun is shining, the air is warm and fresh. The Lord's Palace appeared majestic in the bright sunlight. Lu Feng and Nina saw that everyone had arrived safely and happily said. Welcome to the Western City. 
Lelisa, Leia, thank you for your hard work. Leia replied coldly. There's nothing else. If there's nothing else, I'll go back to the mountain first. Lelisa replied politely. This is what I should do. Princess Lucy saluted and expressed her gratitude. She said, thank you, Lufong, for your help, uncle and Yuffie standing beside her also said, Lufong, Yuffie and I are also very grateful to you for your help, uncle continued. If there is anything else you need help with in the future, just say so. I will do my best to help. Lu Feng happily replied. Everyone is Princess Lucy's friend. There is no need to be polite here. Lu Feng suddenly thought to himself. Are they dwarves? I heard that dwarves' blacksmithing skills are very good. I hope to have a chance to try it. Catherine at this time, still trembling standing next to Princess Lucy. She stammered. Your Excellency Lu Feng. You can save me. I am very happy. Lu Feng replied heartily. Miss Catherine. Seeing that you are okay, I am also very happy. Miss Catherine's eyes were now glistening with tears. Her whole body was in a state of love intoxication. She was daydreaming. You, you, you. He said he was very happy to see me. So happy. Miss Catherine. Everyone woke up this delirious young lady. The young lady said shyly. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just a little dizzy. Then the city lord Lu Feng continued. Ellie. Everyone has had a hard time on the road. Take everyone to rest. Tell the kitchen to make many delicious dishes later. Ellie said. Understood. Young master. Then Ellie turned to everyone and said, Ladies and gentlemen, the room is ready. Please follow me, Uncle Yuffie replied. Sorry to bother you all. Then Jones also turned to urge the princess. Lucy. Let's go. But Lucy lingered. Wait. She said loudly. Lu Feng, please come down. There are some things I want to talk to you about in private. Lu Feng also quickly replied. Just in time, I also have something to say to Princess Lucy. Everyone stood outside the study waiting for Princess Lucy and Lu Feng to talk. Yuffie kept walking back and forth with a glowing lantern. Lelisa is blinding. Say. Yuffie. Stop it. Flashing back and forth so fast that I'm dizzy. The two of them entered the lounge. Yuffie's eyes lit up. She said excitedly. This electric lamp is so magical. It's clearly not lit by fire, but it can still emit light. It's truly amazing. Lelisa felt annoyed. She said to Yuffie in a harsh voice. I'm about to go to sleep. Catherine is also asleep. But Yuffie still won't stop. Lelisa. Tell me, did Lu Feng tell me the principle of electric light? I'm very curious. I'm so curious I can't sleep. Lelisa yawned as she replied to Yuffie. I'll tell you. I'm going to sleep now. Let's talk tomorrow. She thought Catherine was asleep. But she wasn't. She was embarrassed thinking back to her actions just now. She scolded herself. Catherine, what did you do just now? Such a poor performance. It was so hard to meet Lu Feng again. I was stuttering when I spoke. I almost fainted. How embarrassing. What if Lu Feng thinks I'm a weak noble lady? Even though I've arrived at Xiang City. But what should I do next? Should I just stay in the castle forever? Sometimes I make others feel like I'm doing nothing. Although I want to help Lu Feng. But I don't know anything. What if Lu Feng thinks I'm a hindrance? What should I do? Hoo hoo. But what did Princess Lucy say to Lu Feng in private? Hmm, why did His Excellency Lu Feng also say he had something to discuss with Princess Lucy? Could it be them? Save me. Why are there so many thoughts going around? I want to go to sleep too. At that time, outside the door of the city Lord Lu Feng's study. Jones, Ellie, and Mina were all waiting outside the door. Ellie was pacing back and forth. Mina said anxiously. Ellie, can you stop pacing back and forth? I'm going crazy. Ah, I'm sorry Mina. Ellie continued. Now the young master and Princess Lucy are alone in the room. Alone, isn't Mina curious about what they're talking about? Oh, shit. Mina and Joan's ears perked up at the same time. They looked at each other, bewildered. Ellie saw that and asked. What's wrong? Jones said. The conversation inside started. It turned out that Mina and Jones had just caught the sound of the conversation in their ears before reacting. In Xiang City, in Lu Feng's office, Lu Feng invited Princess Lucy to sit down. 
Lucy's face was tense, her voice low and she asked. Your Excellency Lu Feng, I have something I want your approval for. Lu Feng replied politely. Call me Lu Feng. Your Excellency, what your Excellency, is a bit strange, if there is anything Princess Lucy can just say it directly. Princess Lucy heard this and said. Then call me Lucy too. Lucy was serious, talking about the reason she came here today. Lucy worriedly said, Lu Feng, I heard that the fourth prince has already arrived at the western border. Lu Feng closed his eyes, nodded, and replied, that's right. Furthermore, the fourth prince once sent someone to Xiang City to deliver an order to me, formally inviting me to join his command. Lucy replied, fourth prince, I know him well, he definitely did not come to the western border with good intentions. He wants to prepare supplies and knights, preparing to rebel. The western city is so beautiful, the fourth prince will definitely take over this place. Lu Feng, with my understanding of you, you will absolutely not accept his invitation, being forced into this battle. Seeing Lucy worried about him like that, Lu Feng smiled and waved his hand, calmly replying. Lucy, you guessed right, I don't have the habit of standing under the eaves and being ordered around, so I clearly refused the fourth prince's invitation. Lucy continued, Lu Feng, I can use the princess's name to help you summon the centaurs and assist you in fighting the fourth prince. Lu Feng was surprised and hesitantly said, Lucy, if I remember correctly, our friendship is not that deep yet. Lucy gritted her teeth, a little angry but still calmly replied, because I need your help with something. Help me kill the great Prince Lucia and take everything from him. Lu Feng calmly said thoughtfully, so that's how it is. I can agree with you, after capturing the crown prince, I will hand it over to you to handle. Correspondingly, I need you to cooperate with me in doing one thing. Lucy asked, what? Lu Feng replied, I want to reorganize all the lands in the west, but the fourth prince is there, I'm afraid it will affect my work speed. I don't need you to gather people to help me, but I need your reputation as a princess to increase the speed, attracting the surrounding nobles to come here to invest. Of course, I will also promote the things that the princes do. Lucy nodded in agreement, no problem, then from now on we will officially cooperate and form an alliance. The two shook hands to confirm their partnership, saying, of course, happy cooperation, happy cooperation. Meanwhile, outside the room, Ellie pressed her whole body against the door, pressing her ear to eavesdrop. But she couldn't hear anything, so Ellie said in annoyance, um, I didn't hear. Mina stood by helplessly, embarrassed and scolded, Ellie, you're doing nothing like this. Ellie ignored her, still pressed her ear to the door, and said, I'm interested, tell me what the young master and Princess Lucy are talking about, it's been so long. Suddenly the door opened, Ellie didn't react in time, turned to stone, her face was bloodless. Instinctively, Ellie cried out, ah her whole body fell forward, but she didn't feel any pain, only soft warmth. Ellie let out a sigh of relief, but then a deep male voice rang out. Ellie, what are you doing here? Ellie hugged Lu Feng, her face red, and stammered, no, it's nothing, young master. Lu Feng saw Ellie say, just in time, Ellie you go prepare the headline of tomorrow's newspaper, put the news of Princess Lucy supporting Xiang City in the newspaper, release it throughout Xiang City, must be quick. Ellie breathed a sigh of relief, it turned out that those two people were talking seriously in the room, not like she thought. Ellie said, yes, huh, young master, are you guys talking about this in there? Lu Feng was stunned, not understanding what to ask, otherwise what else to say? Ellie knew she was wrong, she didn't expect her to be so dark, her face flushed red, she turned and ran away. While running she said, I understand, young master, I will go and gather the people from the editorial office now, start preparing. Seeing Ellie's actions, Princess Lucy came to her subordinate's side and spoke thoughtfully, seeming to be very wary of me. Do the ladies in this mansion see me as someone who will steal their men? The princess's subordinate asked doubtfully, Oh, does your highness not like Lu Feng? Lucy blushed and said, Of course not, why do I look like that? The subordinate was stunned, his head full of doubts, he nodded, it turned out he didn't like it, I knew it. In the city of Somalia, in a room, several people were sitting at a table eating. Sitting in the center was the fourth prince, surrounded by nobles. The fourth prince said, Ha, huh, welcome to all of you, so, I am really happy. Everyone at the table flattered and said, His Highness the fourth prince summoned us, it is our honor, another person added, that's right, as soon as I heard His Highness' message, I immediately came here. Hearing this, the prince felt his heart swell. He raised his wine cup and said, With everyone's support, I can definitely ascend to the throne. At that time, you all can be promoted. Although he said this, he couldn't help but feel disdain in his heart. These country nobles, they needed people but had no people, needed money but had no money, it was better to wait for news from the western city. As long as Lu Feng comes to me, I will have the royal capital in my hands. Suddenly, the door opened, a panicked blonde man walked in from outside, shouting, Your Highness, something's wrong, Your Highness, something's wrong. The arrogant prince scolded the newcomer, You're being rude. I'm in good health. The subordinate turned pale, knelt down and said tremblingly, No, I'm not fine, I'm not fine, I slipped, I slipped.
Then he raised his head, his face covered in sweat, and said, But, your highness, I also have urgent business, that Lu Feng. He was so scared that he stuttered and could not speak. The fourth prince anxiously asked, What happened to that Lu Feng? The subordinate trembled even more, saying, Lu Feng doesn't know good from bad, didn't even look at his highness's orders, refused, and said, said you are. The subordinate stuttered and refused to say anything. The fourth prince saw that and got angry and said, What did I do? The subordinate had no choice but to say, You are, you are, a big dog, not worthy of his dedication. The fourth prince was angry, he banged the table and shouted, He wanted to die. Then the fourth prince's face darkened, Did he really say that? The servant knelt down and said, Yes, yes, I heard it with my own ears. Hearing this, the prince could not bear it anymore, knowing that Lu Feng could not possibly submit to him, he would definitely die. The fourth prince called, Count Pulley. The count's name was called, he quickly shouted, Yes, there is a subordinate. The fourth prince's face turned pale as he gave the order. Immediately summon a thousand knights and bring me the head of this ungrateful baron. Count Pulley nodded and said, Yes, your subordinate has received the order and will definitely bring his head to meet. His face had a sly smile, and he couldn't help but think that he could finally avenge his son's death. West of the west, on a cool moonlit night, the air resounded with the sound of wind. The papers were flying everywhere on the street, people picked them up and looked at them, it turned out to be today's news. Someone said, hey, have you read the newspaper? The western city has a scale of more than a thousand soldiers. Others vaguely replied, who knows, but even if it's not a thousand, it's probably not a small number, after all, to dare to confront the fourth prince, their strength and methods are definitely not weak. Others said, we think it would be safer to return to our own territory, in a great war, people like us cannot withstand the artillery fire. The other person disagreed, what's the rush, let's see the situation first, the fourth prince should have made a move. And at the fourth prince's residence, those newspapers were neatly laid out on the table. The contents of the newspaper were that the royal capital was in turmoil, the eldest prince had gained the right to remain on the throne, the fourth prince had fled to the western region, intending to save one side, intending to split the imperial dynasty. Baron Lu Feng of Western City had a thousand knights under his command, Princess Lucy was helping, Lu Feng had completely wiped out the rebels. With a bang, the newspaper was thrown down on the table. The fourth prince angrily asked Count Pulley why Lucy was in the Western City and expressed his support for Lu Feng. Count Pulley analyzed what he had learned. Your Highness, I have sent people to investigate, but the most important thing now is to think of a way to deal with those nobles. Perhaps they will betray Your Highness. The fourth prince didn't care, his expression was calm, he replied, temporarily not caring about them, even if the country nobles wanted to do something, they would hesitate, but on Lucy's side, Lu Feng. He wanted to continue speaking but stopped, waved his hand and gave orders. The knights immediately set off, taking advantage of the moment when the country nobles had not yet reacted, they captured Lu Feng and Lucy in one net. The Count heard His Highness say that, his face was blank, he hesitated to respond. But Your Highness, in such a short time, he still hasn't gathered enough provisions. The fourth prince was angry when he heard the Count's reply and glared. Just collect the food along the way, those eight young city lords won't dare to rebel. But if anyone dares to resist, kill them without mercy. The Count bowed, nodded in agreement, and then quickly went to prepare. At the city gate, Count Pulley sat on his horse, leading the army out of the city. This count lit behind, worried and uneasy asked. Count Pulley, the current situation, do you feel we really can? Before he could finish speaking, the count quickly turned around to correct him. This count lip, we have boarded the fourth prince's ship. Even if what the newspaper said is true, we have no way to turn back. Then he lowered his head and continued, things have come to this point, the princess and the fourth prince in the western region, only one side will survive. This count lip was in fighting spirit, raising his hand in a victory sign, yes yes, I think too much we will definitely win. Count Pulley was relieved and gave orders to the people behind him. You understand, give orders and tell the knights to follow us. At the Xiang City Lord's Mansion, in the Flower Garden, Lu Feng and the others were sitting and talking. Catherine held Lu Feng's hand and shook it, her voice whining. Lu Feng, tell me what I can do, I can learn anything. Lu Feng was helpless and said annoyedly. Okay, okay, stop shaking me, my hand is about to break. Yuffie saw that Catherine was so different today, and asked everyone strangely, why did Catherine become like this today, compared to yesterday she looked like a different person. Lelisa was also curious, I also really want to know. Catherine ignored everyone's comments about her being weird and asked Lu Feng, tell me what I can do, I'm not afraid of hardship, Catherine said and patted her chest with determination. She had a headache thinking, her performance last night was too bad, today she must perform well and leave a good impression on Lord Lu Feng. Lu Feng exhaled and asked doubtfully, Catherine, why do you have to work? Aren't you happy in the mansion? Catherine was depressed, her eyes downcast, her voice sad. Of course I was happy at the palace, I just wanted to help everyone. 
Everyone had work to do, only I did nothing, so useless. After she finished speaking, her whole body felt sad, as if dark clouds were covering her head. Lu Feng also helplessly replied, so what is her specialty? Lu Feng couldn't help but think, he didn't expect Catherine to think so much. Catherine seemed to have regained her vitality, smiled brightly, and listed her good points, me, me, strengths, that, this. But suddenly realizing something, what strengths do I have, I, replied gloomily, as if I didn't know anything. Lu Feng then relieved the siege, did he forget his forte? Catherine wondered, hmm, what? Music. Catherine said cheerfully, yes, the lute, I know how to play the lute. Lu Feng nodded and replied, it just so happens that I have something very important, it's not like you can't do it. That is to become an idol. Speaking up to here, he coughed. He realized that this was not earth but another world, they didn't know what an idol was. He immediately changed the way he spoke. I said it wrong, I intend to invite Miss Catherine to become the musician of Xiang City, to create a unique music team that only belongs to Xiang City. In the future, we can periodically hold music festivals in Xiang City for everyone to enjoy. What do you think? Everyone's faces were filled with questions and doubts, what is the use of a Xiang City music team? It was useless, Lu Feng didn't think so. So he explained. Conquering the world, not only needed soldiers and weapons, conquering culture was also an important part of it. As long as Catherine did well, the music team could gradually grow stronger, in the future it could definitely become an important existence, able to protect the stability of Xiang City. Catherine realized her importance. She happily replied. So the effect of music is so great. I agreed to build a music team. Catherine cheered up. Lu Feng also smiled. He patted her head. He encouraged her. Yeah, keep it up. I'll definitely be the band's first listener then. Yuffie sat on the table looking at Catherine with admiration and congratulations. How nice. Lelisa saw that Yuffie was unhappy. She knew she had something to say. She encouraged her. She also told the Lord her wish. Isn't that okay? Don't be afraid. Don't take the first step. Who knows what the outcome will be? Yuffie cheered up. Nodded. Hmm. Yuffie was encouraged. Turned towards Lu Feng. Voice full of determination. Said, Lord Lu Feng, can you teach me the method of making a hot air balloon? I want to use it to fly to the dwarf kingdom, to find my mother. Lu Feng slightly drooped. She apologized softly. Are you Yuffie? Sorry, it might disappoint her. Although the balloon could fly, it couldn't travel too far. So she couldn't reach the Ali kingdom by relying on the balloon alone. Yuffie bowed her head with a sad face and replied. Oh, really? Lu Feng saw her sad. He remembered something. Said. But, the hot air balloon can't fly far. But now I have the idea of designing something that can fly farther. If I can make it. Maybe she will go to the Ali kingdom to find her mother. Yuffie's eyes lit up. Disbelief. Ask again. Really? I agreed to try and see if I could make it. Lu Feng said to Ellie. Give her the book. Ellie nodded. Yes. Young master. This book was brought. Yuffie was puzzled. Asked. This is. Lu Feng introduced. There is a magical machine here. It is called a steam engine. As long as it can be created, her wish to find the Ali kingdom. Finding her mother can be realized. Lu Feng thought in his mind. Lucy said that this Yuffie has very good forging skills, the weapons she creates are loved by the nobles of the royal capital. Maybe she can make this. Yuffie nodded. Determinedly said. I, I will try. Lu Feng saw that Yuffie was in such good spirits. Cheer her on. Keep it up. If there's anything you don't understand, come find me. Lu Feng stood up. Tell everyone. Go to the garden to relax for a while. Next, go back to do some serious business. Speaking of politics, the princess became serious. Question. That's right. It's time to discuss the next step. How to deal with the fourth prince. Lu Feng said again. Discuss what the fourth prince is doing. Now we have to prepare for the opening ceremony of the gold coin supermarket. The princess was out of step. Stunned. Like a silly little chicken. At the newly opened shop in the western city. Everyone in the city was standing in front of the shop. The shop was huge. It was painted white on the outside. The decoration was very beautiful. Everyone was suspicious and curious about the shop. Another new shop had opened. Stop looking, stop pushing. 
Inside the shop, Lu Feng led Princess Lucy on a tour. The princess couldn't help but admire the shop's decor. It was so beautiful. She tilted her head curiously to look around. There were things she had never seen before. Not far away. In front of the lollipop stall, Ellie's eyes were shining like stars. This was the lollipop that I hadn't tried yesterday. Lu Feng couldn't see Ellie anywhere. He called out, Ellie, are you done checking? Ellie heard the young master calling her, so she ran out, but still holding the lollipop in her hand, and jumped happily towards Lu Feng. She said, young master, the furniture is in place, there is no problem, we can open any time. Ellie realized something was wrong. Why was she holding candy? Oh no, she wasn't paying attention, she had it in her hand, oh no, oh no. Ellie's face turned pale, she looked around in panic, and quickly hid the candy. She couldn't let anyone know that she was stealing. But before she could hide it, Lu Feng exposed her. She was sure, why does it feel like the shop hasn't even opened yet, and someone has already come in to steal food? Having said that, Lu Feng put his arms around Ellie's back, grabbed her arm that was holding the candy, and brought it forward. Ellie saw that her actions were discovered, her face turned red, she stammered. This, this is not me, I took it for Mina to see. Just as she mentioned Mina, Mina appeared, her face surprised, she asked, huh? After Mina knew everything, she pinched Ellie's face, angrily scolding her, the little fox stole the candy and blamed her. Ellie was at a loss for words, so she regretted and apologized, sorry, I was so scared. On the other side, Princess Lucy looked around the store and asked curiously, Lu Feng, I've seen the furniture you have here on the market, why do you need to open another store like this? Lu Feng smiled gently and picked up the price list, saying, the main reason is here. Then he showed the price list to Princess Lucy. The princess saw that it was much more expensive than the market price, so she looked at Lu Feng curiously, hoping he could explain. Yes, in this supermarket, the quality of the goods will be a little higher than in the market. Moreover, the packaging will also be much more thoughtful, of course the price will be a little more expensive. The princess was still not satisfied, and asked again, but if it was just that simple, it could be done in the market too. Lu Feng disagreed, explaining to Lucy that this was to stretch the class, to put it more generally. The products here were aimed at the high-end market of the rich, while the large market was aimed at the common market. Moreover, in the future, most of the merchants here will use the special color packaging of the western city. As long as the packaging of those products is remembered by customers, then when they appear in other cities in the future, it will be more distinctive, and at that time, it will be more convenient for me to enter the market. Lucy nodded in agreement, so that's how it is, this kind of packaging compared to the big market, is indeed more attractive to the nobles. Lu Feng continued, yes, that's right, the purpose of me opening this shop is to tightly grasp the noble population. Thinking of something, Lucy fell silent. In the future, although this thought was good, the fourth prince would probably come to him soon to cause trouble. Now, he was not prepared to face the enemy. Was it really okay? Lu Feng saw Lucy worried about him, still smiling without answering, I have planned this for a long time, not temporarily stopping because of the fourth prince's small matter, moreover. Pausing for a moment, Lu Feng added, you don't need to worry, I guarantee, the fourth prince's army will absolutely not enter the territory of Xiang City. Having just finished speaking, Lu Feng told the staff beside him to prepare to open the shop. The female staff member respectfully replied, yes, Sir Lu Feng. As for Lucy, even though she found what Lu Feng said to be impossible, the boat had already set sail and had to go, so she could only trust him. On the streets of Xiang City, Viscount Gambath, Lord of Michelle City. His face was cheerful. Eleven held several loaves of bread, happily walking towards the newly opened shop. He kept thinking in his head. He had been in Xiang City for several days, the city still brought him surprises. It was true that no matter how long he walked, he never got bored. Suddenly he saw ahead, people were gathering in front of the store, everyone was talking excitedly, he asked suspiciously, why is this place so bustling? A passerby helped him answer his question. Today, the currency supermarket will open. The city lord said that everything is there, there are many new inventions that have never been seen before. This Count Gambath was full of doubts, there was everything, let me open my eyes and see. Next to the shop is a bustling atmosphere, everyone is curious about the items here, the staff is extremely enthusiastic. As soon as Viscount Gambath entered, a beautiful object approached. A respectful voice greeted, Hello, please deposit this side. The Viscount was startled by the staff's attentive attitude. Although he was unfamiliar with the person, he still nodded, Okay. After the Viscount checked his luggage, he walked to a shelf, which was filled with neatly arranged jars. He picked up a box to look at it, and was surprised. It was milk tea, what was milk tea, and the quota was that each person could only buy two jars. The staff saw him so confused, so they came closer and introduced him. Sir, this is a specialty of our western city, a drink very suitable for entertaining guests. 
Moreover, the one in your hand right now is a special edition, very different from the ones other nobles buy, we have completely upgraded the quality and taste. The Viscount was a little surprised to see that it was so good. He said, is that so? Then give me two bottles. He looked over to the other side, another noble was also being introduced to the goods by the staff. On the other side, two nobles were discussing compressed biscuits. Sir, look at these biscuits, I heard that the army is using them. The army is using compressed biscuits, this is an improved version, something the army uses, how can it be sold here? The Viscount was puzzled, biscuits, I heard that the military supplies of the western city are all very good, even though they are improved versions, let me try them. Thinking so, the Viscount picked them up and put them in his shopping cart. Still from behind, a voice rang out, that person said, look, isn't this Viscount Gambaf? I didn't expect you to also come to Xiang City, coming at this time, aren't you afraid that the fourth prince will misunderstand? The person said it was Viscount Genie, the lord of Mar City. Viscount Gambaf sighed and replied indifferently, I am a great noble of the west, the fourth prince will not do anything to me. Moreover, I have heard about the miracles in the western city for a long time, and have always wanted to come and see for myself. Viscount Genie laughed loudly, as if he had met a like-minded friend, and said, I think so too, this western city is truly very prosperous, whether it is urban planning or commercial activities, it is worth learning. The two looked at Lu Feng who was discussing business in the distance and said with admiration, I really admire the business talent of the lord of Xiang city. It's a pity that he refused the invitation of the fourth prince. I really don't know what's going on. Perhaps it is the arrogance of genius, said Viscount Gambaf. On Lu Feng's side, a businessman approached Lu Feng and said, Sir Lu Feng, I want to discuss cooperation with you. Lu Feng laughed loudly and replied, Let's talk about cooperation later. There's a chance. Today is just the opening day of the supermarket. Viscount Gambaf was amazed at Lu Feng's calmness and carefreeness. Moreover, look at him, the fourth prince is about to come to his door, and he is still worried about the matters of this currency supermarket. Lord Lu Feng is a capable man in the business of the city, but he just doesn't know how to fight on the battlefield. The fourth prince has an army of men and horses, but the western city has only been prosperous for a year. If they fight each other, the western city will not be able to avoid disaster. Viscount Genie also nodded in agreement, yes, at most in two days, the fourth prince will arrive here. After we have gathered enough intelligence, we will set off back. Ellie saw the two viscounts Gambaf and Genie on the other side and pulled Lu Feng's hand. Young master, the city lords of Michelle and Mar have arrived in the military port construction plan. Do we need to invite them to discuss it now? Lu Feng shook his head and replied, no need for now. Going there now will only make people feel like we need relief. 